Are we live? Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Sup. This is Carrick with ACG, Yo. and I'm here with Abzi. We're doing podcast, the best gaming podcast, number 448. We're going to talk about Sony doing multi-platforms, Namco and Square promising to make better games, people, and a bunch of other stuff. Thank you very much for joining us. Abzi, thanks for showing up every Yo. Wednesday, by the yeah, way. Yeah, of course, dude. Yeah. Every single oh, yeah. Wednesday. Pump day. All, yeah. Always on, always on point is Abs. He's only had mm. one possible possible issue and it didn't even turn into an issue oh yeah dude you I'm, got it i'm always you know i like to be punctual you know what i mean yep. If, uh, yep. i like my bases covered yeah as regular as the northern rain as they say but oh, oh we're gonna talk about banishers too which turned out to be oh great. man i'm so excited i'm so excited that's literally exactly what i want from that team man i yeah. uh, vampire stuck with me for a long 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 time I, this it's one, one of my favorite games this one as i joked in the it doesn't have that instant karmic hammer that Capri sure. Sun, Sun and a bunch of fucking villagers does as a vampire, right? Yeah. So you're like, yeah, yeah. you're just like preschooling everybody, sucking them dry, sure. drinking all those human uh, Capri yeah. Suns. That has a yeah. different feel than Banishers. Banishers is a couple and they make a promise. You get to choose which promise. This is not spoil anything. This is what the entire game is based on. You get to choose do I want to help my dead lover come back or do we want to just <laughs> yeah, go baby. forth? And not necrophilia. That's but what, what happens about. is it yeah. it change as you play. You have to continue. You have to hold the line, and yeah. you have to. And it's about lying to yourself for other people. It's really well done writing, man. Don't nods writing, dude. Is dude on and a level is that is good? Chris Aval uh, Chris Avalon level, and that is oh, honest yeah? truth. Yeah, well, not yeah, from in their Vampire pros dude? maybe, but in their like this fucking matters. This matters think... in that. Dude, I think uh, Vampire is the only game to ever have me sleep on a choice, like take over mm -hmm. 24 hours to yep. even consult family and friends, dude. Seriously, yep. I was going to sound like the nerdiest shit in the world. But, but man, yeah, Vampire was the my first, like I, I, don't, I didn't play any other Don't Not game. So Vampire is like my, that's what I think of them when I think that. So I'm glad that they kept it up for this they and i'm really excited hopefully i get some time though jesus christ man i'm playing really big games which, yeah see you know. that and we're going to talk about that in a little bit because there are a lot of games yeah. i would also say it's funny though that those guys can make super salad a moral choice like they can <laughs> like and that's right they can be like super yeah. salad and you're like oh yeah. my god and they're like well in the soup we've killed cows and in the salad you know the, yeah we can't hear plants scream but maybe they feel pain yeah. and you're sitting there going Fuck, I'll skip them. And that's yeah, what's don't cool nod, about if Banishers. If you dated Don't Nod, they would be asking you oh, where to dude. eat every day. You know? Yeah, yeah. And then, do you love me? Are you thinking about me? And you're like, I don't know which to answer because I'm going to be in trouble either way. That's why Banishers way. is, man. It's, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Thanks to everybody joining in. We're going to be talking about all that stuff. We're going to be talking about Banishers. We're going to also be talking about um, Sony definitely looking at going more multi-plat. Sony has announced a bunch of stuff that's popped up. Now, when I say multi-plat, be aware, I could mean... Mostly we mean PC. Is it possible we get a Nintendo, a Sony title on Nintendo? I think that <clears throat> something like that's possible down the road. Sony and Microsoft, not so much. And we'll talk about why, actually, I think a lot of the discussion about multiplats, we're going to be surprised, especially when the Switch 2 comes out, to see these guys sort of courting the hot girl, both of them. They, that's, the, for you. that's the way it feels to me, is that Microsoft and Sony are both trying to date the hot chick. What were you going to say? Uh, do you think Sony would ever um, start a storefront on uh, on Windows, like instead of Steam? Do you think they'd go that far? Especially with their, like, what, they have 14 other oh, uh, live I see titles. What you're, I see what you're walking around. Rather you mean so that they, revenue, so rather than and, losing the 30%, I, yeah, get, I was like, what? Oh. ecosystem and the Windows, oh, you know? Oh. Hey, if yeah. things went on, um, no, because Steam is so um, amazing at sales and amazing right. at getting people uh, integrated in. But there's two big problems console makers do not want to admit. But we know that they've admitted because they've talked around it. One is concurrent players. Concurrent mm -hmm. players is the hammer that loves and hurts at the same time. People yeah. love to use it when it's good. And when it is not doing great, they absolutely are fearful of anybody finding the concurrent players because it can create a negative feedback loop. Especially they, in a multiplayer uh, game, right? Uh, even that, but I saw somebody bitching about Banishers yesterday. They were like, they well, said everyone, something like, I, yeah, oh, only 2,000 people I are think, playing Banishers. And I was like, dude, yeah. what's that dude, got to do creative? with your single player game? 
Yeah, and and that's that's also be, I think this concurrent uh, player stuff we've been seeing it a lot since like BG three that mm -hmm. that time. Yeah, that people yeah. started hyper focusing on it. But before that, it was super annoying because um, I think Twitch culture also seeped into that or like streaming culture. Where now, if, yeah, you know, it's a, any single player game. It's like oh, it's dead. You know, after a month after, oh my god, it's dead. Look, only like a thousand yeah. people are playing. It's like dude, who gives a fuck, dude? It's like a single player campaign you're gonna go through once. But yeah, I think that that type of culture of like concurrency over a long period of time. Which which probably is also caused by like the existence of so many uh, live service games and games that are, you know, just like have a long shelf life, which causes people to like hyper fixate on that one thing. Yeah. 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 I could see Sony trying something with the store if they packaged in cloud and stuff. They've obviously changed. If you guys remember years ago, they were like, you know, the only way we see games being played is generational. The only way we see games being played is locally. Blah, 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 blah. And now all that's changed because they're smart. They're business. You change. That's okay. Fanboys don't change. Businesses change. You have to adapt. Yeah. You have to mm -hmm. adapt. And so mm -hmm. could cycle. I see them trying to? Sure, because we've got Ubisoft and you play. But they would do it in all places, I would bet. I would bet mm -hmm. they would try to throw something positive on their store. But that's a lot of finance to build a yeah. store and have it a is. store be good. You play... Mm. I know some people dislike Uplay because it's another launcher, but I don't have too many issues with it as a store. I just don't use it as much as Steam. Mm -hmm. But then you have mm -hmm. Epic where there's a, a great deal of problems they had, like no shopping cart. So worst. Right? No, they still have stu 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 it's been years yeah. and they have stupid shit they didn't add at all. It's very bare bones. Yeah. 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 So there's there's all kinds of things. But I would say this, the easiest way to talk about this is absolutely in no way, shape, or form does anybody want Steam continuing to rule. Steam has a shit ton of problems. I don't care if people say they love it or what have you. Steam has a ass load of problems that they're never going to fix, ever. And what's going to happen is the companies just continually look. And if it pays off, they'll stick with it. And if it doesn't, they're going to make their own. and Or they're going to try to figure out another way to do it. And Steam's not the only store these guys are courting, either. See, that's sure. the other thing. Money talks. Epic. Mm -hmm. You know, others, there's other stores we're going to talk about I, uh, about Apple, the Apple storefront and, you know, them dropping the restrictions, which is a huge bit of news no one has talked about for reasons I cannot quite fathom mm -hmm. right now. But yeah, dude, it's going to be an interesting couple of years. I'm glad they're adjusting because I think companies need to adjust. Dude, we're sitting in a world that is completely changed from just four years ago, let alone eight or let alone 12 I mean, just in the way we get the games and how yeah. we play the games, how we experience them. Um, but, but the concurrent thing, back to that, yeah, it's sad, man. Um, I saw somebody saying something, well, I don't know if I'm going to get banishers because only 2,000 people concurrently are playing it. And I said, but it's a single-player game. Oh, well, doesn't that mean it's bad? And I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. That's the problem. And what's weird to me, Abzi, is if you had talked to us in the podcast four years ago, we would have celebrated going to Steam and finding a game no one played. And we'd be like, look at this hidden gem I found. Yeah, and absolutely. we have completely reversed. Do. Well, not so much. I see the opposite. Right. Well, we do. But I'm talking yeah. about that as, as a whole, sure. concurrent is wielded as a hammer now. It's wielded, as, contest. it's wielded as a popularity contest or a hammer. And like you said, a single player game a year later doesn't have a ton of people playing it. And people are like, oh my God, it must suck. And you're like, wait, what? Sure. That the purchases were done. That's a single. Pl it doesn't work that yeah. way, man. And yeah. there's it, there's it sort of a me off a lot, but I, I I started becoming desensitized to it. It's like a lot of Twitch culture, like streaming culture, man. Like the, yeah, so they they've been that way for a while. They were also judging it not on Steam concurrent on uh, Twitch viewers or who's streaming it, which is even worse. You know what I mean? Because a game can worse. be really, really good and have a lot of concurrent players, but like not streamable and not like in the stream or culture. Or it can be paid to stream. Immortals of Avium. Uh, oh man, a lot, a lot of, um, a lot of games. Yeah. You know? uh, gang, gang, everybody, ACG and everyone else have a great day. Robert says, Benjamin says, should be a great show. Getting over hump day, talking about games, waiting for banishers to get delivered to the doorstep. Looks like a lovely double A experience. That is exactly what it is. SBZ says, gang, 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 gang. Everybody's here. Hello. Helldivers 2 slaps. It does. It slaps me out of its game all the time. Damn. This is my second so? version of the game. Oh, dude. Yeah. It's. Oh, shit. It, it works and then do, it's really just it sucks it's a, a sign of the game, times. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe it when I see it. Bloodborne PC. Let's let's all think positive oh, about man. that. Um uh since when YouTube started to have comments during live, YouTube has always had comments during live, as long as I've streamed. What are the main problems that Steam has as a platform? Oh god, thousands. The price that they do, discoverability is considered the worst amongst all the stores. Um Wait, the what? way they actually 
Discoverability? Yeah, discoverability is considered absolutely horrible. It's why wish lists are a thing now. I don't know if you yeah, were on, thought, maybe you weren't I, on I've, Friday's podcast, maybe but we I've talked heard directly a, about this. Yeah, I've heard indie devs. Uh, well, maybe, yeah, they have to like opt into things for sales, but um, a front page is obviously like something that is hard to, to get on um, mm -hmm. if it, because, yeah, you need organic Search growth. is broken. Um, front page filters are added by people, which but breaks them. I've heard them. good things about like the, the, what it offers for indie devs to like get their games out in the front of the store. But I think that also, you know, That's comes wish with lists. sales. Uh, wishlist is huge now. Wishlist is really, yeah. really big because because it also it's like an, a YouTube algorithm thing. The more you like a video, the more it shows up. I think yeah. uh, like the more people wishlist something, the more it like kind of shows up. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, and then uh, like I said, the price, the discoverability, um, wish lists are a thing which is great to help discoverability. Um, and then they do have a distinct problem also that a couple devs want to figure out, but all their API is out there now. And it's hurting some people when it comes to like, if you leak right. a patch, if you update a game or if you update something because maybe you're going to add DLC All as a secret Vegas. and you're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, th that one is but yeah. beside the point, I think, but it's sure. an API issue. I've heard developers be like, they, you know, they like this stuff, but, um, and I think one of the big ones for Steam in particular is that it is very slow to change. It is very mm -hmm. glacial to change. It's, it's just now updating Steam VR in a continual, I would say, in a good pattern, and that's most likely because they are releasing a new VR. They do nothing yeah. for others because it's their store. And so mm -hmm. you have that that odd situation there. Um, but their price is one of the biggest ones. The price is the one that, you know, a lot of people are looking at other stores for releases because the amount of money that they take, which isn't really crazy it's 10 percent higher than one or two it's equal to another but i know a lot of devs are like damn you know, you know that's, fact, a, that's though, a heady amount of money if you request codes from them and sell them at retailers like humble bundle and stuff devs get like 100 percent of the of the revenue which is pretty interesting i it's didn't awesome. know that before yeah yeah that's but great. if they if it's on the store obviously they take 30 percent yeah uh, let's see. Carrie says, I've been getting more games on GOG lately, not forcing updates on me and installs are treated like installs, not subscriptions. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's obviously a good point. We're going to continue to see other companies sort of adjusting and, and sort of seeing what they can do. Um, yeah. let's see one week it's Pal world next week. It's hell divers and so on. Yeah. I think that's one of the big issues with games right now. Right. Um, it's Jack happening since like says, H1Z1 PUBG actually league. You know, since 2013, 2014, I feel like they move on from game to game or yeah. like genre to genre even. Extraction shooters became really big around 2019 to 2020, which moved on to like dark and darker. And then they keep kind of evolve, changing into like something. Helldivers, I don't think will last as long on Twitch and stuff. And on like, I don't think it will last as long as a like a like a culture, gaming culture zeitgeist. I think when you look at, and I could be wrong on this, but I think when you look at Helldivers, it's okay to admit that it is going to be a fun burst multiplayer game. The sure. burst will be there day one. Um, I've already felt felt it was highly repetitive even after a couple hours, even getting kicked out. I was like, and I was talking to game dev who's played only a couple more hours than me because he got kicked a ton. He got kicked more yeah. than I did. And we were coming to grips with the idea of that some of these people think every multiplayer game needs to have a super high concurrent number for a great deal of time. And I'm not 100% sure there isn't a really good tangible audience for those games that aren't that because i sure. return to division and i'm sure division's numbers go down and then way up when they do theirs and i think yeah. people forget that not every game is going to be power world even though power world dumped dramatically 97 percent of its audience but that doesn't mean that the people who played power world when it was a hundred percent of its audience had a better time or well, a less know, good time you know it's right. it's weird exactly like i know the waves thing um it resonates with the team behind Final Fantasy XIV. Their their whole mm, uh, I think yeah. they do it pretty smartly because they, they even come out and say, you know, it's a game that's meant to like you, you know whenever we release a new update or new patch or new expansion, you can come back, play, do your stuff, finish your things that you wanted to mm -hmm. do, leave, play other games. There's a lot yeah. of games coming out. They've even said that, and then come back and subscribe when there's like a new patch or whatever. And they do it like that, and and I think that's way smarter than. You know, things like WoW and like other live service games, I feel like they rope you into this like daily thing where if you don't do, if you don't log in every day and if you don't do your dailies or if you don't do your shit, then you're going to like fall behind. So like there's this like morbid thing where it's like, oh, I don't want to fall behind. So I'm just going to keep playing and keep playing. And, you know, so I, I think that's a healthier, like the waves, just just having things in waves. And it's really fun going back to games because 
it's it's like palate cleansing. It's like you know changing it up. There's a lot of cool shit coming out. Yeah, know? for sure. I'm yeah. reading a couple more of these, and then we'll get started. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, Banishers is the first new game I bought this year, at least not since the RE4 remake. Uh, it checked just enough boxes. Uh, yeah, it, it is good. Steam does have a discoverability queue right on the store. Yeah, it's terrible. Did you know I'm, what um, game? Hang on, oh, let sorry. me read these. Uh, it's right. unlikely that Sony will decide to publish any of the exclusive games on a competitor platform like Xbox, even if Xbox potentially poised to do the opposite. I think that you should mark your comment, Craig, and let's discuss that in three years. Um, I think that people are not... Uh, I don't think you'll see a Ghost of Tsushima 2 on both systems, but I do believe that if Xbox changes the way they do things, Nintendo and Sony, that we're going to see a blurring of the lines that people just will never... Uh, old fanboys are going to have a very hard time in the next coming years. I truly believe... No, not only I truly believe it, every sign is that we are headed that way. And when you get these big games that cost a bunch of money, so they look at recouping finances, and one of the ways it'll start with Nintendo. It will. We've already seen some you know, going over to other things. We've seen them going to other places, but I just have a feeling maybe not exclusive day one, uh, but you also won't see Xbox. I also don't know why people were misconstruing that because Sea of Thieves and Hi-Fi Rush were going to Sony that that meant day one and date. It's not. They're going to deal on FOMO. Their entire thing is going to be FOMO, just like Sony's doing with PC and, and PlayStation, where it'll come mm -hmm. early on the console. They'll get you with the double dip, which, by the way, their own numbers absolutely back up. All of the leaked data absolutely backs up that that is a valid business decision. And Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo even. Maybe not Nintendo right away. But Nintendo even will take advantage. Uh, ACG, avid listener and review watcher. First time catching you live. I just moved the U.S. from U.K. and need some new gaming friends. What's the sub-level needed on the Discord? Tomahawk, it's $5 on the patron Discord. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you join... And you tell me in a week it's not worth your five bucks, I'll refund you. Just Tomahawk. Just Tomahawk. Though. Not everybody. Nintendo are the ones that drastically need to improve their online. They do. They do. And the rest is just uh, hellos and different games. First, thanks to everybody for joining. Thanks for doing Patron. Thanks for doing uh, Super Chats. They help the channel. We don't do sponsors here or anything like that. And uh, I appreciate it. Let's talk about Banishers. So... Did you do Life is Strange? No, right? Still haven't done that one. But you did Vampire. Did you do Tell Me Why? Or the Telltale a games? A little bit, Have you I done think. the Telltale ones? No, no, I've never like actually done a Telltale game. Okay, never done a Telltale. So what are your... I, I what, think I did Walking Dead Season 1 and like with 2013. Lee? With Lee? The main yeah, character, was, Lee? Was, uh, Lee and the, 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 the Carmen Clementine? Team, Clementine? Clementine, yeah. So what's a game that pushes moral choices for you then? What's a game that uh, you've played that Detroit, pushes more choices? Oh, um, Detroit the, Become Human. Great, great Detroit example. was a really good one. Um, Tyranny. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah. Vampire, obviously. Vampire mm -hmm. was, like, I think the biggest, like, moral quandary thing, like, I've ever played. Like, the biggest. Uh, the dilemmas were, were way... You know, it wasn't just like it was like a trolley problem with like five layers. It wasn't just like would you kill five people or one people. It's like would you kill five prisoners or like a doctor or something. You know, it's yeah. Like they they had they had more layers to it to everything. Um, uh, other moral shits. I mean, Catherine a little bit. I mean, Catherine is just you know it's kind of kind of kind of about that doing like moral mm -hmm. choices, cheat on people or not. Um, I've done. Uh, in normal RPGs, uh, I don't think. I mean, they have some aspects. You know, sometimes they do these like moral moral dilemmas. Obviously, right. like, you can see that in Fallout. You can see it in uh, in uh, in Outer Worlds. You can see it in a lot of games. But like the the ones that really hinge on moral moral choices, I would say is, is, is the mentioned ones. That, yeah, that I that I talked to. Alpha Protocol is a really good one. That's um, <clears throat> more about like social engineering. I feel like like they did such a good job with. Uh, with 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 the uh, with that aspect, I feel like more than better than other games. I don't think I played a game that had like as good of uh, kind of social awareness. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. About how to like talk to people and what like just kind of studying how 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 people are, how people act, and responding them with something they'd like to hear rather than just being like, "Oh my god, I love your hair." That's for sure gonna work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just kind of yeah, social engineering stuff. Yeah. I would say with um, with Banishers, the one thing people need to remember is, uh, it, it, and I described this in the review, if there's a triangle and it's mechanics and story and then, you know, atmosphere and all that stuff, mechanics would be the shortest 
it would be the shortest side of this pyramid for sure. Yeah. It's got yeah. good upgrades. They're very tangible. There's just not a lot, but the, they're very tangible in the weapons. So it's like, you know, like rookie weapon, and then it goes to relic all the way to relic. And they're huge bonuses, massive bonuses. And you can do builds, which I thought was interesting. I was talking to another person about their builds. They were doing a rifle build, which you can do. You can actually do a, a, a build based around using your spirit rifle, as I call it, which can just destroy enemies. So, But the combat's there. There are some issues with it. It's not super slick. It's like Vampyr, which had its issues. Vampyr was like, oh, it's got good combat sometimes. And then it would sort of fail you. That's the way this one is a little bit. Once you start upgrading um, Antia, she gets these spirit powers that you can sort of loop in during combos. But I found it funny because you'll be swinging your sword and then she comes in with an uppercut. And uppercutting a ghost is just hilarious. I don't know why I find it funny. But it's like, swing, 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 sword. And then she's like, Bia! like you know, like some Dragon Ball character. Um, but the sounds are horrendous. Is it in like the Shadow of Mordor, how it works? Like you got your spirit, whatever? Yeah, in a way, you got your spirit version of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the sounds are bad, man, on the attacks. Whew. The sound in the game is epic Damn. everywhere else. You got epic screaming from banshees. You've got like uh, the all of the environmentals. Like when you go to a city and you're talking to a lady or to the town, you're talking to a lady, you can hear like the crunch of somebody walking behind you. You can hear the wet, the items being forged, all the shit. And then you swing that sword, and it's like, her month. It sounds like, like the world's most depressive pillow fight. It sounds like two people pillow fighting each other when you're swinging your weapon at somebody. And the gun sounds amazing. He even cocks a flintlock or a, a, a ball and a, a, a ball weapon. You know, it's not a weapon you would normally cock, but he puts the ball in the in the barrel and then goes like, and the bar the ball goes all the way. It's That's something you would never. It doesn't work, but it looked awesome. <laughs> It looked yeah. awesome, man. It was like yeah. that moment where you're like, that is for coolness, and it looks uh -huh. cool, but it is terrifyingly unrealistic. But yeah, it's awesome when you do all that. The story's great. The the back and forth between the characters is awesome, and then the moral choices are rough. Really rough. Nice. Yeah. Good shit. Really rough, man. Like, there's a choice in there where I was like, are you f kidding me? Because you have to basically kill humans to bring her back sort of like vampire where you drink to get power and dude it's sad because if you don't do it and then you go to sleep at night when you sleep she's like a true this is this is don't not at their best writing they don't talk much she he goes to sleep and she's a restless spirit right out of like mythology and shit she is restless while you're sleeping it's a time lapse and she's pacing Laying beside you, rubbing your hair, getting up, walking around, thinking, sitting down, depressive, crying while you're asleep. And so you get this amazing feeling of like a true restless spirit being with you. But then during the day, no one can see her but you. So every decision you make is only on your shoulders. No one knows she's there. So if you do do this decision and somebody blames you, you can't say, well, I'm trying to bring this person back. There's nobody there. Nobody sees her. And so they're, the weight of all these choices is on you. So you start to go, okay, I don't want to have these choices. So I'm going to maybe save more people or, or not try to skirt the truth. But then if you do, she's restless at night and pace. And you're just like, oh, God damn, there's no way to win. It's really well done in that. And it's got five, five endings. So, And the two I saw were definitely different. Um, I, do, I cannot speak for all five being different. But I can say two were dramatically different in their tone of what what occurred. So that's good in that in that part. But dude, it's awesome, man. It it turned out I had some I definitely have some issues with its combat, and I didn't know at the price I was like hedging. But because it's so long, it is not a short game. I think sure. that's what pays off, and its sense of travel is amazing. It's not even they're big. They open up. They they blossom into these cool levels. But at first, you're like, oh, my God, these are going to be really small locations. Like, I'm screwed. This is not going to be super flexible or super open. And then it's like mystery, clue, clue, investigate, decide to blame a person or ascend a person or banish a ghost. Then travel, travel, shortcut, camp. And that content that that weird, like, it, it's like almost like an arpeggio on a guitar. There's something very, like... No matter how you go about it, once you go to sleep that night, it feels like you've always done something. There's this awesome pattern that goes through everything. It is truly unique in that way. Like, definitely 
especially at the end when things really started ramping up, I was like, oh, no, I don't know which or what I need to do and how I'm going to go about it to come out with what I consider to be a good ending, um, which my first ending was not good at all. And my second inning was better. Uh, Souls Keeper, $12 Super Jet. Gents, following the huge omission from Tucker Carlson in his interview, what do you think Putin's most played video game is? <laughs> uh, Putin's most played video game? Probably a UFC title. That fits. That fits Putin, right? Wrestling, UFC, because he's a big judo guy. Really? Yeah, he's a big judo guy. And then Jeff's $5 Super Chat. Finally getting around to join the patron. Loving the Discord and talking to you earlier. Thanks for the wonderful content. Yeah, it's a blast talking to you guys. I appreciate it, man. Um... What are you going to do? Do you know when you play this? Are you going to skew towards bringing her back? Or are you going to skew towards pushing her off? I think it depends, right? I, I could see myself uh, going like, oh, you know, let sleeping dogs lie type shit. Or I, it depends. Yeah, I guess it depends. It depends no on what you what anything. you get in the story, basically. Going in like that, other than your review, completely blind. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to. Man, I have like a, I have like a, I'm at like 85, 84 hours in Yakuza. And I, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like at the halfway point, maybe mm. a little bit prior to the halfway point. There's still, you know, a lot of content that's being hinted at that's still not unlocked. And I'm yeah. just trying to, it's a fucking massive. So it's like, it's that. And then there's like Final Fantasy. There's like Pacific Drive I want to play. Banishers, Banishers I've been looking forward to for such a long time. Again, because Vampire is one of my favorite games. And, um, and, uh, you know, some so, so those games have these choices that, like, hit you in a different way than, like, a normal uh, or, like, a Baldur's Gate or, like, another CRPG, you know what I mean? Right. It's, like, it's it's it's, it's different feel. I feel like it's, like, it, it more hinges on, on you know, uh, very tight choices rather than, you know, kind of loose, do whatever you want, whenever you want type thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm super looking forward to playing it at some point. I can't you know, wait till you banish somebody. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. want you to I, see I don't the... know, man. It took me a while in Vampire to actually kill anybody. Oh, it took me a did fucking it? while, dude. Because I, like, I was like, I was like, okay, well, weird I'm, time. I can tell. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, everyone has, has like redeeming qualities, and then this guy, yeah. can this guy, can, you know. And then the one guy that I thought had no redeeming qualities where I was like, fuck this guy. This guy deserves to die. Kill them. Then I was like, oh, by the way, this guy ran an orphanage, you know? So, uh, you know, I, yeah, I'm, it's probably going to be a very difficult thing for me to like banish people. But <laughs> it does have choices other than obviously banishing or not banishing, right? Like Vampire does. Like, uh, yeah. Has, like, side. yeah. So you do the investigation and the investigations are profoundly well done. And yeah. like I said in my review, it's like one of the first investigations. It's like somebody's being driven mad by calculus. And you're like, what in the fuck? Why are these numbers? Why are these ciphers? Sure. What's going on? It's got an Alan Wake vibe, right? But no CSI nice. crime board. Right. And then you gather your hints. There's usually four for a character, four for a character. So you got eight hints you have to gather by looking around the environment, fighting off enemies. But then you also have the ability in some locations to cast these spells. And spells can do different things. Bring a memory back up. Uh, bring the ghost back to talk to it or basically envelop all of the evil emotions around the investigation point and summon a scourge, summon a massive demon that's the epitome of all these of all these emotions in this investigation. Not, not all inv investigations have the scourge. But um, I will say that the very first one was probably one of the most difficult because by the time I had talked to everybody... And then you get some clues. You go back and uh, a swamp don uh, swamp donkey. He's one of the. Uh, he's not a patron anymore, but he's, we talk to him all the time and and stuff like that. He he's been in the Discord for years. He decided to buy it, and he said, with even in the first like two hours, there were at least like six or seven moral choices where he was like, "God damn it! I knew it was going to be like this. Like I knew it." Where you're happy, but you're unhappy that it's that way because you're like, "I almost you almost don't want it. You almost want to be railroaded because if you have a choice, it's on you." And that, I think, is awesome. The one, the one thing you said that really has me super interested, where I think it's, like, such a unique thing, is the the, the whole fact that, like, you, you got the, this ghost that you nobody can see but you. So, like, yeah. all this weight rests on your shoulders. I think that's, like, a huge burden. I want to see it. Like, I've never kind of felt that in a game. So that, that really interested me for sure. Yeah, yeah. dude, it's, it's rough. It's rough. It's rough. It's rough. Because I went to bed. I saw the cutscenes in sure. trailers of her being restless, but it didn't right. click until I made one. It's and like, oh, I that's did, my fault. That's yeah. Or 
yeah. or that's my lover who's hanging on and it's like oh christ like what what do i do and you oh, oh is this that is what make me cry this is what's yes yeah 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 because it made me melancholy i'll say that okay, much that and so if i get melancholy me, like, you're gonna be balling right yeah. <laughs> dude it, it, the, one of the greatest things about this is is it didn't hit me until i did sort of make the choice the darker choice mm. and then i saw restless and the shit she said at firesides is where you can talk to her you sit down at the mm -hmm. fire you upgrade your character you can fast travel anywhere in the world that there's another bonfire you've unlocked and all of a sudden something she said and her doubts towards what i was doing and what it was going to do to me and dude somebody reacted to me in the town and they said something and i was like oh my god i'm by myself i forgot because you don't that's the thing it's almost like if somebody has you you hear this a lot of times you, uh, with schizophrenics you know if they hear voices and stuff it's like they're never quite alone even with meds there's always the worry that, that it's there and that's right now the only real thing i can compare this to or uh possession you know exorcism possession where something's there no one can see and you're making choices no one can understand or you might be making choices no one can understand and they all hurt that's the thing every and that that one of the greatest uh, one liners was in, from a tv show that they said what choice do you make if every choice hurts and i brought it up in a couple other reviews and i use it sparingly because only some games make me feel that way but this one mm -hmm. dude i was like mm, what like there was no, yeah. no way out of it, man. And you can't talk to anybody as a reviewer, which sucks balls. Because I wanted yeah, to see like right. anybody. I was like, ah, is anybody? And looking on Twitter to see if anybody's hinting that they, you know, had these moral quandaries. So, dude, yeah, it's yeah. I could see Banishers not in the sense of a sequel, sequel, but I, they know their shit, and it's obvious that they've hit this. I hope this does well. I, I we won't know for a while if it does. But dude, those guys need to be cherished. Because there's very few companies that make me think about a choice other than those guys. Like, yeah. the honest truth, man. Like, they're one of maybe three companies in the world or people or writers where I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, that fucking hits. And that hits in a non-forced way. Detroit Become Human did a very good job as well. Very good job with that. Where some of the choices, you know, that you did were like, mm, I'm not getting out of this, you know, unscarred, I guess. Um... So you did Detroit Become Human Vampire. You felt Detroit didn't hit as hard as Vampire, I'm assuming, because of the way Vamp things play out, right? Detroit, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, it's, a tro it's, a, it's, it's kind of tropey, right? But it had, has high moments. Uh, mm -hmm. What it did well was, was uh, make you feel like your own story is yours. Yeah. And I know a lot of people say that, but, like, for example, I did a thing... Like some character died for me and not one of the characters you you control but a character died for me where it felt like it was very sad but but it was so well ingrained in what was happening and it fit so well that i was like oh this is my story and this happened in my story yep. and i don't yep. regret it because it's so good and i looked and it's like only six percent of people got that death scene and i was like whoa you know what i mean which and that made me feel like especially seeing like the percentages I was like, oh yeah, you know, hipster, hipster numbers. But no, no, like what it did well for me was just like those those scenes, those high moments. Um, but as for like actual super difficult, because because in that one, it wasn't as much moral quandaries, but it's like you, you kind of have a goal in your head and you're like, I, I want to make every decision work so that I get the outcome that I want. With Vampire, it was like, well, shit, what the fuck kind of question is this? How the hell am I supposed to choose between this and that? There is no yeah. chance. Like, I have no idea. It's like, uh, as I said, trolley problem times a thousand. So um, that's, that's I think, where, you know, the main big difference between those two. Yeah. I, I think you're going to, you know, and anybody listening, you know, you don't have to get it day one. Um, while their titles go on sale occasionally, sometimes often, depends on the title. You know, if, if you're more into the moral, maybe you'll wait a little bit because the combat doesn't speak to you if that's not your thing. I can say it's got five difficulty levels. And sure. the game isn't hard until... On hard, it wasn't super challenging until the very end. And I talked to somebody who reviewed it, and I asked them the same question. Or somebody who... Uh, it, well, it's Fighting Cowboy. But we talked about it after the reviews went live. And he was like, dude, th it got pretty tough there at the end. You like, like it, the, bills, it the Bills thing? Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, he was the one who sort of 
reminded me about the rifle build because I'm not a big rifle fan in games unless like it's really a thing and it is a thing here. And when I went back and started messing around, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, there's definitely a lot of builds that you could choose. They're not builds around different weapons. There's like parry build, I guess, a spirit build where you use her and then rifle build. There's certainly a block, maybe not a block build, but a tanky, maybe tanky, tankier style build. Yeah. Sorry, give me one moment. Sorry. I'll no worries. Like one minute. No worries. While he's doing that, I asked everybody what game you uh, you have had that has made you had hard choices, and that's Witcher Red Blood, a uh, Red Red Baron storyline. So funny you mention that. I believe. See, this is the problem with not scripting my reviews. I believe I brought I brought up Red Baron in the review. If I didn't, I apologize because the Red Baron is considered one of the better decisions uh, and and moments in game, and certainly you could say Mass Effect, uh, the suicide mission, some other missions there. So you could say that those games have done it as well. I thought I brought up right, uh, the Bloody Baron too, and but I, I could be wrong on that. Ooh, um, Bloody Baron was like one of the best fucking quests of all time. The whole yeah. Bl Bloody Baron sequence. Yeah. Those, I thought I brought it up in the review, were, but I might have been wrong on that one. Those, yeah, that hit hard. The whole thing with his uh, wife and daughter and all that shit. That oh, was, I did. Oof. Thank you. <laughs> I told them this is the problem with not scripting oof. reviews. I couldn't remember if I'd mentioned the Bloody Baron, yeah. but that is what I thought when I was playing it. Um, Life is Strange is definitely something that this game sort of um, hinges off of as well. I will say performance was a little hedgy, not amazing, not terrible. Um, but they had some draw, uh, some pop in that was pretty crazy at times, texture pop in. And so like you'd see some mud in the ground and then it would turn into rocks and you'd be like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. And there was one time where I was trying to walk across something I couldn't move. And the facial texture. And then it turned to rocks. Yeah, so yeah. here's the weird thing about it. You're absolutely right. But there's a level of detail in the facial textures rarely seen before when it comes to rosacea, blood pressure, dirt, um, uh, uh, streaks of, like, sweat on skin. They do some great moments with that. But their mm -hmm. lip syncing sucks balls. It's like a translated movie at times. Sometimes like it's fine. like a 2010s. But then other times it's like two forearms flapping. They're like, hello. It's like a Bruce Lee movie where it's like, I will. Kill you. And, and you're like, the case mm. where like the main main characters are probably they're better, better, yep. better work. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and dude, the main bad guy in this. Hmm. Is he better than hmm. Gontor or them? Or one of the best bad guys in a game. I think I've ever, like when you first see it a little bit into the game, and then later on, it, 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 creepy. Like I was like, what is going? And, like the movements, the actions, the way it acts, very well done. Um, what else for Banishers before we move on from there? Performance. I'm just really excited. Cost. Really excited to play it, man. Yeah. Really yeah. I think a lot of people will like it unless you're expecting, you know, that triple A voice, uh, uh, you know, lip sync. I will say the voices are well yeah. done. There's, there's a I couple that. Vampire had amazing voice work. That's you know? exactly what you could say is this mimics Vampire where the lowest is serviceable, best is emotional, and, and then it's the fucking, it's the, fucking juice or it's the like concrete of it that's so good it's that what they're saying matters so even if they say it in a blase way then you're like ooh, why did they Dude, say vamp that in a laid back way like yeah yeah, yeah. what is that like, like you know <laughs> like vampire had had whole swaths of dialogue and usually in games you know i got my adhd kicks in or something and i start wandering but somehow i, I don't know what the fuck sorcery they did it was like the, the dialogue was so good and and the, their delivery was so good that you're just like super focused like just hyper focused on what they're saying just locked it's, in right yeah yeah, yeah yeah um so when it, we finish up the <clears throat> banishers talk you know it is ten dollars off on the consoles so you can certainly look at it that way um or you can wait for a sale i personally think because of the length of the game and because of the writing and the style and all of that and the choices well worth it unless you're like how much is it in the states 59 uh on pc or fi it's 59 49 i think it's you know consoles 49 here. i think that's how it goes yeah, yeah. sure um so let's move on from there to sony and the multi-plat discussion so this morning or yesterday maybe it's their financial discussion their their uh president or ceo has talked about a bunch of stuff including sony wants to improve playstation profit margins with more aggressive pc release strategies now, we will not show the the PDFs here, but no one is surprised by this if you understood the Insomniac leaks. 
and you started to read uh, some of the data there and some of the leaks where they've made it pretty clear that PC is going to be um, far more important for them as they move forward. And I know Sony fans don't like that. They want it to just be on console first, but here's the thing. No company is going to stick to that in the future. Um, I think Sony is pretty smart. Helldivers is their number one release of all of, you know, concurrent. It's done the best. It's on both. It's cross play. They did everything right other than the servers and the crashes, but they've got it. They've got the delivery and the idea right, I think. Are, are you surprised by them? I mean, now that we've seen S Spider-Man and fucking Horizon and Days Gone, are you surprised that Sony would look more at PC? Do you still, do you no, like I thought it? That was a, yeah, it was a super smart move. Like on their side, obviously it's super smart, um, especially with the, with the, the COVID boom of people buying PCs left, right? And center like i mean pcs are the highest in the market share now before it was consoles you know now pc is kind of overtook the gaming space market um uh so that's obviously smart on their end on my end i'm you know ecstatic i mean i i uh i want games to be available for everybody ideally right so so just having and they have really good games like sony has really good exclusives so like having them come to pc is really really good we just want more you know i guess shima needs to come you know it's been a while um bloodborne no it's never gonna happen but um <clears throat> yeah and i'm excited for horizon because i mean uh you you know i'm 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 just i'm I'm not i'm not trying to be a snob at all i i don't like being a snob i don't like being like oh pc master ace and shit i hate that i hate that so much you know i really really do but but with aiming and and you know some controls and stuff there's some games especially with horizon like having your whole tool set and stuff like that just like yeah like being able right. to maneuver and do all these things the combat is great in horizon i think um just with mouse and keyboard i just felt like uh just felt way way better Comp to more, play competent. more competent more yeah. competent and, as a and player. i double dipped with both because i played i me bought too. horizon when it came to ps4 i didn't really i couldn't really get into it because of the controller thing um so i i played the shit a shit ton of it when it came to pc and i'm gonna do the same with forbidden west um double dip and play a shit ton more so uh yeah i mean I'm, I'm happy i'm happy people who don't have playstations get to experience their games as well on pc so um i think it's important to read some of the reasons so that people don't just assume you know there's some weird thing here but he notes that cost reduction in the console cycle is really difficult to come by compared to previous generations due to the increased cost of components and implied that console prices would be dropping while it looked for ways to improve margins this is uh from video games chronicle and from all other websites, because that's exactly what he said. I think it's important to remember that even you and I discussed this for a little while. NVMe was dropping in price and stuff. And then some of the NVMe makers were talking about a, a, a particular chip line was going up in cost, which was going to raise the price of stuff. And that's one problem with PCs, right? But it's also now a problem with consoles because consoles have NVMe in them. And so sure. that's why the cost reduction is becoming more difficult. And it makes sense. He said, um, <clears throat> How can we, given the situation, put our product lines together to make it affordable without relying on steep discounts to reasonably sell them to continue our commercial journey on a sustainable basis? He asked. I personally think that's important and there's an opportunity there. He also noticed that, um, or also discussed, um, in the past we wanted to popularize consoles and a first party title's main purpose was, was, that's important, was to make the console popular. This is true, but there's a synergy to it. So if you have a strong first-party content, not only on your console, but also other platforms like computers, a first-party game can be grown with multi-platform, and that can help operating profit to improve. So that's another one we want to proactively work on. I personally think there are opportunities out there for improvement of margin, so I'd like to go aggressive on improving our margin performance. I think to keep companies working, to not see Concrete Genie's devs be fired, and because I love Concrete Genie, I would have loved to have seen that come to every console, every piece, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm firmly behind this, and I think that this next gen is going to be a lot of people who are going to have to really rethink what it means Dude, to be a fan of something. What better way to get uh, revenue after a game is developed um, than, than, a port. than like releasing it on other platforms soon? Yeah. I mean, the other thing is what microtransactions, expansions are great, but, you know, sometimes they're not. And that's like, I, I feel like that's one of the most surefire, best way to do it. And I, in my head, I'm like, that could not possibly piss anybody off in the planet. But I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Somehow I was wrong. Somehow people got pissed about it. But it's, it just seems like a win, 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 win. Right? Yeah. Right? 
Yeah. I, and I here's know. why for yeah. me. I didn't have yeah. your issues with con con uh, control as much as you did on Horizon, but I did have issues for sure. Mm -hmm. Not there's mm -hmm. absolutely undeniable that when I jumped on the PC, I felt more competent in Horizon or Days Gone. But mm -hmm. At five hundred dollars or four hundred to get into those games, looking as good as they do on Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo Switch Two, hopefully, it makes sense to offer that low end. And I've been trying to push people to understand that for Xbox, an Xbox really is a big a baby PC for them. That is what it is. It is a PC market, and now with the Series S at a super low amount, it is the yeah. ability to jump in. And then if a person looks at these ports and ports get better because we just had yeah. you know we, we've had some bad ones particularly from sony if these mm -hmm. ports get better it's it is awesome because i can talk to a friend and say dude they're like i want to get into video games but i don't want to spend fifteen hundred two thousand dollars on a pc to get it all set up it's like no worries for now you yeah. know spend your 299 to 599 get into a console enjoy the majority of the games there and buy all intents and purposes, from what I understand, Xbox and Sony will have them by probably a year on their consoles exclusive. And not all, all games will go. They'll decide what sells well. They'll decide what makes sense on PC. To me, it's awesome. If you care about FOMO and you want it day one, there's nothing wrong with buying it on console. And yeah. then if you want yeah. it later with mods, you want something like this, boom, yeah. you've got yourself yeah. a PC. To and me, it's that's magic. That's magic yeah. sauce. And like, if you think about it, what, what you said, uh, so like Xbox is the, the mini PC, PC is, you know, they have their Xbox platform. It's basically there's Xbox and PC and they release their games throughout Xbox and PC. And so like for them, that's, that's their, that's their exclusive. That's their console. PlayStation just has PlayStation, right? So the double dip would happen on PC, um, like releasing it again uh, a year later or whatever. So for Xbox, the only other options are like Switch and PlayStation. Those PlayStation. are like the other platforms. Yeah. And then there's like maybe other stuff coming. But like that's that that is because they're already on PC and that's not considered multi-platform. That's considered their own platform. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like the same thing as like PlayStation releasing on PC later. I think that yeah. mods are a huge loss from Microsoft currently in that they should make, they should have Bethesda work with everybody and figure out how to do a mod for their consoles, how to mod yeah. their consoles. Because I'm watching people in our Discord stream streaming modded games on the Xbox, the occasional, you know, Bethesda game, going like, damn, if that was most games with a file nexus kind of thing, dude, oh, you're man. talking about, that would be their big seller to say, hey, you know, Ubisoft's going to release Assassin's Creed on getting, everything. But guess what? We got mods on Xbox. That's they're getting a, so much better accessibility for modding in general. The modding yeah. scene is just more accessible than ever, especially with Wobbajack for like, for, with, with yeah. you know, obviously Bethesda games having uh, native support on consoles. Like it's just, it's just, this is the time to to just go full, full on with it. You know what I mean? So. And I think I was telling Abzi prior, one of the things I'm shocked we haven't heard more of is uh, on the 26th or 27th, Apple had basically stated from now on, um, a game store can be on the Apple ecosystem without every game being reviewed internally, which was the big thing prior to Activision and uh, Sony and Microsoft's FTC discussion. Prior to that was Microsoft versus Apple. And Apple had stated, sure, you can put a store on there, but every game that's in there has to be reviewed, has to be rated. Well, now they've reversed that. They've added a charge onto it, which Sarah Bond has stated openly. She thinks is a step backwards because it's a fairly hefty financial investment. But I'm actually surprised more people aren't talking about that because prior to the Activision, Sony, Xbox thing, the biggest discussion actually was Apple and Microsoft wanting to get their store on the Apple store. And that to me also, I personally believe, um, is most likely being looked at pretty hard at Xbox as well, trying to figure out not only fight that fee or get it down because the fee is ridiculous. I was telling Abzi in the fee structure, it actually not only over a certain amount do you have to pay for every consumer, which isn't a ton, Microsoft could offset that with sales, but if you patch it, they consider that a new user, which then yeah. means you would have to pay again. Wild. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I was looking at it going, why did Sarah, because I saw this post on a website, and somebody was saying, oh, Sarah Bond had said this, and I went and looked, I was like, what's the problem with that? And then I broke it down and I was like, oh no, that is that that is weird. Um, yeah. But I could, I definitely see all these companies wanting to get everywhere. Microsoft, in particular, wanting to be on TVs. We we know mm -hmm. they have deals with Samsung. I think LG. Maybe they reverse those. Maybe it's LG, and then they're doing Samsung. I can't remember which. 
but these they're wanting to be on everything and um like i said man some of the room we'll, we'll see what happens but i think it's pretty poignant that Microsoft has changed their entire business event that was going to happen or that people thought was going to happen to just be the podcast. I think that that goes to show that a lot of these leakers and these rumors and shit like that were just absolutely full of shit. What really happened there was something we've talked about earlier, which is one or two people feeding to one or two people. And that's why they all have the same rumor. Breaking, breaking, breaking new, it's new like, news. It's uh, like Marlon Manson, like hitting his it's own a, rib cage or breaking it so he could suck his own dick. It's like yeah, the same you find type out of it's thing, complete. Right? Yeah, it, it is really like a game of telephone you played as a kid, where you know the rumor just gets built and you, you, all these people do it. And then when we started seeing the apology tours, we started seeing people post on Twitter. Well, I've heard this has been rolled back, but then you see all the others that get their news one step away from the initial person saying the same thing. And then it goes all the way back. And you're like, oh, Spells my like God, wildfire. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we took a full, I think, week and a half before I started really talking about it. Because I was like, I just want to check with some people that I know might give me <laughs> real data on what's going on. Versus, And that's why I think that um, people need to adjust their entire thought process. Microsoft wants a a on Apple. And I said this last week and the week before, Sony wanted on PC more, and now they've admitted very fully that they do. So it's not tooting my own horn. That's anybody who follows business and follows what Sony and Microsoft have been saying. As Abzi brought up prior to the podcast, Microsoft has been saying they want people to play on every device. Um, when they finally do that, you shouldn't be surprised that they finally do that. Like, yeah, because before sort of people thought it was just like PR talk, like, oh, he just means, you know, he's just saying that, but like, you can't really play their games on like PlayStation or Switch, but you know, yeah. that, <laughs> that may not be the case anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, may not be. Um, yeah. And there are also, we've got the, the service games that I talked about, 12 service games with uh, six of them being delayed and then six of them coming out, one being gutted from what I heard from somebody I trust uh, to, mm -hmm. to really completely remove the the feeling of a service game, but we start to see game like Helldivers do well. If we see a couple games like Helldivers come out that is PC and PlayStation at the same time and is their version of a service game, do you feel the distaste for service games is going to go away? Because I did no, find I it think... funny that people... Yeah. I just want to add this one bit. I found it funny that everybody was bitching about service games and then the moment a good one sure. comes out or what we consider... Because it's not service games. Because it's not service games. Exactly. Or, or it's because, not all service games. It's that sub-genre that we talked about before over and over again where like, like yeah. you know, Destiny and like some others have where they kind of push the same type of shit with like the the battle passes, microtransactions, the uh, currencies, the uh, seasonal bullshit expansions, sunshine, whatever the fuck they call it. Yeah. Like, there's like these like tropes that the subset of service games have that uh that really ruin like the whole because what, people are just tired of that stuff i don't think they're tired of i don't think they don't like actual service games because there's like so much that people always love that they're like you know mmos ff14 fucking even new world divisions now, and like yeah. a lot of pvp games division you got uh, you know tarkov like a lot of stuff that people like but like when you hear live service game you think of the the the, the, the worst Genero formulaic fucking yeah. thing we keep getting and i don't blame them you know what i mean me me too like i hear life service i'm like oh you know what Same. i mean but then something like uh like hell divers or something else comes out and i'm like okay maybe maybe it doesn't mean that all service games have to be stupid and bad you know what i mean the it, always online thing is still like a thing um when i think that's the big thing is if sure. it's a single player game that's serve that's always online you're gonna question it you're gonna be like why that's the I worst no clue. part I have yeah. no clue. If it's can a I game play? you can play solo and you right. have to be online. And not right. because people might not have internet. No, fuck that. It's because of the server issues. Because you're yeah. still gonna you're gonna have service issues every time because the servers like there's no net code. You know, there's no like net code on the on the side. It's all right. kind of blended in with like all the code and stuff. And and every new game is like something very unique. And that's why people keep having server issues. It's not like they can like just throw money on it and be like, we're never gonna have server issues ever. Every new game that's coming out, especially with a high player count, is gonna have server issues. That's just the reality of things. So uh, I'm hoping more people would offset that by allowing people to play offline. Maybe like update stuff to the server, like right. not all the time. Maybe once a day or something. I don't know. Yeah. I think service games also fall into a category that reminds you of buying a single player game that requires an executable to download. Yeah. And that we have had those. We have had yeah. games that do not have the, it's a single player game doesn't even have the full game on it, 
and then you put it in and it's like must download and you're like wait what i think that they get mushed together too because that in a way is a service game it requires a service to even get the game even if you're buying it physical we don't want that that needs to go mm -hmm. the fuck away that needs to never ha it should have never happened should never happen but when you play a division i'm still i love division but i'm still very mm -hmm. mad there isn't an offline mode yeah. Even though I love yeah, it as a course. service game, game, I'm like, why is there not an offline mode? I mean, 90% I mean, of my playtime is solo. It's single player, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, yeah. is you, when you look at it, you're like, dude, come on, guys. I, like, mm -hmm. look at what you can do. M maybe you would get more, and maybe you'd get more piracy, too, which is a very real thing. Banishers was cracked within 37 minutes of being released. Yeah. Right? It's just yeah. the that's unfortunately what some of these companies are looking at too. And whenever anybody tries to say that like it doesn't impact things, you look at the number of downloads and you're like, it's impacting something. Yeah. You know, when you have three hundred seventy thousand people downloading, like downloading. DRM, like lowers your FPS by like twenty FPS. You know? <laughs> yeah, you'll get you'll get that. Do you know the DRM I have the biggest issue with that really does what? doesn't screw up performance ever. I can't launch mm -hmm. the game instantly. Easy anti cheat. It is oh a diabolical. Oh, it, it, my. once I get in the game, Abzi, it's perfect. I never it's not have like issues. it works. It's not like it, it works. It's that I can't launch the game and it's my legal yeah. game. I was trying to play Back for Blood with the people on our Discord and I must have launched that fucking game 40 times to the point to yeah. where people were like, dude, I can see you launching it and and like it crashing and launching it. They were watching me go playing, not playing, playing, not playing, playing. And you're like, oh, Christ. So there yeah. are DRMs that affect getting in. And there yeah, are and some like that affect ones. FPS, but but not yeah. to the point to where I like, think we're seeing. A, a really good example is um, ah, Resident Evil Village had like its own DRM, and the oh. issue with that was that it was updating too frequently, so it did affect performance. But it's not like the norm, and and the performance effect isn't that huge as people make it oh, out to be. Oh, you mean it was checking if it was valid but, way more times than it yeah, should have? Yeah, way more than it should have, so it affected performance. So you'll still get stuff like that, but it's not like a, a normal thing. Yeah. That sucks, man. You don't want that. Jack says, yeah. ACG, not going to lie, dedicated community service wasn't perfect, but it sure seems to have a lot less hacking and overall problems when they could when they could be individually addressed rather than, and then he cuts off. Not going to lie, dedicated community service wasn't perfect. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry, buddy. Um, I will say that when it is super annoying, somebody just says that, so it is super annoying because these are games I want to play, guys. Easy anti-cheat is my, it, I, I feel like it hates me personally. And um, yeah. And even in review code, this has happened. And um, it launches always. It just takes five or six times. And one time I found out that if I opened a browser when I was trying to play the game, something was going on and it was slowing the check down enough that I could launch the game. So now when I play an easy anti-cheat game, I always go launch game, open browser. And it almost 80% of the time it works. I have you know no clue worse why. too than easy anti-cheat? I hate them. It's the anti-cheat that work on like a kernel level. The ones that you have to restart yeah. your PC for them to take into effect, like the Riot one. Oh man, it gives me issues on my PC. And I'm like, nope, I am not even playing that game because of and that. And anything you know? like that, including CD cracks, you know, a lot of our antiviruses find that and go, whoa, something's up. Like this is yeah. not supposed to be on your motherboard. It's not supposed to be in your BIOS. It's not supposed to be a rootkit. Something's wrong. And you're like, no, it's not. It's actually the one legitimate game I'm trying to play. Please let me play. Yeah, it can it can definitely happen. Yeah. And this will be something Sony will have to deal with as they go forward. They don't want to repeat a Helldivers. They want more people playing. So they're going to, I'm, I'm sure they're going to work hard on making service sure issues are hard, server, server issues are hard. Yeah. And they dude, the want crashes were ridiculous on that game. Yeah, I, returned the P I returned the PC version. And then decided mm -hmm. to decided to get the console version because I don't know if you can rebuy if you refund it on Steam. So I didn't even try. Yeah. And then you I can. bought the console version. Can you? I bought the console version and it friggin' crashed like six times. And I was like, I'm done. I'm just not even. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I played a couple yeah, times yeah. and then it just crashed. And it was fun when I played it, but it was that sucks because not it's worth a good a game, right? Mm -hmm. That's what sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, Clipper says, ACG, for RE8, it was Capcom's own DRM that caused issues, not Denuvo. Correct. That's what Abzi said. Yeah, he yeah. made that clear. Yeah, yeah that was theirs. Yeah. Yep. yeah, he made that clear on purpose because that was that was a company trying their own style of DRM and yeah. put way too many checks in there. Johnny mm -hmm. Q, $5 super chat. ACG, you're the GOAT. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It is not true, but I will take it today. So, 
when it comes to consoles and all this stuff, do you do you have any? I'm not really too it, the Xbox thing. All these things are going to take a while. Do you have any? Sure. How about this? Do you have a do you have a one year future? Do you have something that you think might happen that no one's talked about or something in gaming? Um, uh, like a Nintendo game on a PC. Like, do you expect no. to see what it, would it blow your mind if Super Mario came out on PC? My, okay, let's let's say Apsi future future uh what do you call it prophecies. predictions your pr predictions and prophecies um, for the future i think switch 2 will rise to a level where it can compete so that um third party games can comfortably be released on it i think we're going to start seeing a lot more third party games day one on switch yeah. um i think uh cloud gaming is going to be bigger we've talked about that a bunch um i think uh everything's going to shit. We're never going to get single player games ever again. We're only going to get live service games that are trash and they're going to suck you of all the money you have with microtransactions left, right, and center. Uh, no, I, I don't think it'll be that bad, man. I, I think I'm, 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 I'm on the more optimistic side. I, uh, I think we're going to start seeing more games utilize uh, fast load times to do some cool shit because we've yeah. been seeing a rise True. of that. You know, Alan yeah. Wake did a great job with that. Spider-Man did a great job with that. Um, uh, and I think, uh, I think we'll be all right, man. I think we're going to, we're going to see, I, I think we're going to see a lot more diversity in the, in the live service space. I yep. think we're going to see, uh, people are going to be surprised with, uh, with, uh, a, a lot, a lot. I think, um, there, it's not going to stick to like this formulaic approach. Yeah. So somebody brought something up and this is a reason why I brought up the switch games or games from Nintendo coming on PC emulators are beyond powerful. And we've already mm -hmm. got emulators that are trying to do the PlayStation 4 and Xbox, you know, and all and Xbox or PlayStation 4 has been jailbroke, all that kind of stuff. I could see Nintendo in the future saying, OK, people are playing all these on an the emulator. Maybe we should release the occasional game on a PC. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm not saying it'll happen. I just think that it's possible that they'll look and say, oh, you know, because they can see the same data I can. Oh, the new Zelda is being downloaded 500,000 times right now. For the emulator, which Tears of the Kingdom, probably more than multiple millions. I don't know the numbers. I never tracked that. But I, I could see these companies looking and saying, we have to make Great the change, mods, even if we way. don't want to. Great mods. Yeah. Great mods yeah. For, for Zelda. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would say I agree with you in the fact that the diversity thing, we're seeing a crunch down because the bubble turned in and it bust. And the pus that we're living in and people nice, being dude. laid off. That yeah. is the pus, right? That's the bad thing. We're gonna it's been popped and we're gonna have to live yeah. through that shit. But I would honestly say, like dogs return to vomit, we're gonna go back. You're gonna see people redoing a lot of the same stuff. They're gonna be adjusting things. That's because I find I find this disgusting. I <laughs> so let me explain to you why I'm so like hateful at this exact moment. Okay. I think three, four, five, six, seven of these games, maybe eight of these games that have released in this very tight pattern where the game comes and goes because people are jumping could have been delayed. Not all of them. We know delays aren't easy. But we saw Space Marine delay smartly. Space Marine was very smart, and they're a smaller company, AA, and they delayed their game. Some of these games that release in these tight patterns that we could all look and go, listen, there's only a certain amount of money in somebody's fucking wallet. I personally believe that they were trying to release in the bubble. They were still thinking we're in the bubble when all indications was that it had burst. And I do blame a couple companies for that. I'm not even going to say what companies. You can you can listen to the podcast COVID and tell what companies. It was very unprecedented. Though, it was right? unpre like, it was unprecedented. But but that bubble ha was has been burst long enough that some of these companies that could have helped their developers do better by delaying a little bit. I I'm just saying. It's just my opinion. It's not fact I, that I'm a little bit mad that they didn't because some of these games haven't done as well as I think they would have if released not in this glut. Oh, yeah. Not oh, in this yeah. glut of consistent yeah. titles from everybody. And we're seeing smart, yeah, smaller titles going, hey, man, you know, we joke about the cyberpunk. We apologize. We're going to delay. But I celebrate almost all the delays because yeah. I'm just like, guys, we're in this really unprecedented release schedule where... If I'm a reviewer and I look and go, listen, there was nothing in end of December, starting to January. I was also out of commission. But if I hadn't been, there were a couple of games, but then they hit and they hit hard. And 
I just worry that some of these games would do quite well with a small with a with a change to the release schedule. And I think that luckily Sony made it quite clear in their announcement they now understand that Microsoft understands it. I don't know what Nintendo understands. So we'll see Horizon Three stand on its own two feet, not before any crazy major. You saw the PC release out. date though for Forbidden West, yeah. right? Uh, is it March? Dude, it's what is it? One day prior to Dragon's Dogma or something, or like one day after or something like that. Like, and I could 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 honestly, Abzi, and though, before Rise of the Ronin, on and before Sony, Rise of the Ronin, yeah, could could you and I and have, the Peach game? <laughs> Sorry, could yeah. you and I have guessed that Dragon's Dogma two was going to explode this big? No, I if you no, I, I, Dragon's Dogma anymore. has exploded to something yeah, that's beyond man. people want that shit. Man. People ever since are Elden chomping. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're like chomping they at the bit that for that. Game. Yeah, yeah, but I, I would love to see some adjustments. That's all. I would, you yeah. know, it just makes sure. me mad. Um, let's see. Nintendo Online needs to improve a lot before they think of moving it to another platform. Uh, Nintendo Online, these games wouldn't have to be online, so there's no connection between Nintendo Online and a PC title that I'm talking about, at least. Uh, Indio says, if Nintendo does anything at all on PC, it's going to be a digital subscription service like they're doing with Nintendo. Wait, do people oh, actually think They're Nintendo talking would... to each other. I thought, I thought he was talking to me, PC? and I was like, I'm not talking about that. Hmm? I don't think we'll see anything Nintendo on other platforms. I think they're like the only ones that are just going to be super close. Okay. We made a bet on GTA yeah. 5. Let me make you a bet. Tell me if this is oh. fair. By okay. 2006, more than three major Nintendo titles will be on PC. 2026? 2000, the end of December, whatever, 31st or whatever of December 20, uh, 2026, three major okay. Major Nintendo titles will be on PC. On PC, okay, would you, do you feel that that's fair? No, we won't even do money. Would you, we can just do a, or we can do a one hundred dollar uh, donation to a pet. Yeah, a, a pet pound uh, to a one hundred dollar donation. Okay, is that fair? Twenty six December. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Okay. And so yeah. you're you're thinking, or, and I'll I'll give you this: two or less doesn't count. It has to be three or more. Oh my! For my stance win. is can I? My stance is no, no Nintendo games on. I'm saying platforms. you'll win even if it's two or less. Even if it's two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, okay. I, if I'll it's make two, if it's if it's two, let's both pay. No, 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 no. I because I think zero. So I want to stand firm on that. Oh, you're gonna stand, stand on firm. firm on so I'll win if even one. Okay, let before yeah, yeah. we make the bet. If, if one, what like actual title? Gets what's a, to PC. what is a triple A? Would Pikmin count? Yes. Okay. I mean, okay. Uh, Pikmin, uh, Pokemon, uh, Pikmin, Metroid, uh, Metroid, Zelda, Mario, Zelda, Mario, Mario, all their IPs. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not, I feel like that's not, fair. Maybe not like second party. Maybe not like Xenoblade. We I, won't or, count or, second. Mm, what about? Mm, was there a Bayonetta on PC? Yeah. Okay. Wait, so we won't yeah, count second was, party yeah. at all. Yeah, like Final Fantasy and stuff. Like yeah, those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. I can I can stand to lose that one. I can stand to lose that one. I just okay. feel that, um, and this is just my personal feeling, that all the companies are changing and seeing the writing on the wall, and that 2026 feels fair to me. But that'll be cool. It'll give me a reason to stay alive. It'll give you a reason. I'd be happy uh, both I ways. I know you so. would. Yeah, in the end, you <laughs> would just be like, all right, that's $100 worth, worth donating. It's great. against on PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. I don't think it'll get ported. Really? Okay, dude, yeah. this is cool. This is cool. It shows the difference <laughs> in true apathy versus hope. I have yeah. hope and optimism. You have true. You believe they're apathetic, or do you believe Bro, they're I've been actively? I've Nintendo to go I know digital you for a long, long time, but I don't think it is going to happen. Chris says, so. did you guys notice Thaumaturge, or whatever it's called, delayed their release? Yeah. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. did they delay? Did they? Okay. Yeah, they did. That looks like an interesting game. Very yeah. interesting game. Yeah. yeah. More. The more I saw it, the more I was like, oh, this looks... Like something I would, you know, sort of. What happened of to Broken dig. Roads, dude? Uh, the publisher died. Versus oh, Evil was the, the publisher. Never, is the I don't game know. not coming out? So when a publisher, when a small publisher like that dies, remember the, the I believe they were the Humble Bun Bundle publisher. They were the company that worked for Humble Bundle versus Evil. They died. They they completely closed their doors. And I don't know. They I'm sure somebody shops around that, but I don't know where it is. And mm. it was not ready. They delayed it. It was not ready. I had review code. That game was not ready for release, and it was going to get absolutely destroyed. It had some really good things, but it was not ready. And so the delay happened, then the layoff happened, or then the, the shuttering of that company. So I don't know where that is. I'm sure somebody is looking at it because there yeah. are still uh, three or four smaller you know, publishers that could definitely, I mean, Focus could take it, you know? Yeah. 
Did you like uh, the other one, Sovereign Syndicate? Was it any good? Sovereign Syndicate was good, and Sovereign Syndicate, huge, huge shout out to them. Those guys uh, reviewed well. They reviewed, but see, that's, that's awesome. the other thing. They released in this huge, like, just miasma of, of, I, I have it of titles. Listed. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to it at some point. I, I yeah, love those very, types of Yeah, very games. cool. Unique characters. PC Gamer, I think, uh, who at times I don't know where they're going to go with a review because I'm sure they have different people. I didn't know right. where they were going to go. Saw their review. It was quite high. Saw a couple uh, high for that kind of game. Saw others reviewing it high. Yeah, it, it from what I could see, it reviewed high. But here's the problem. Yeah. I don't know if the high reviews matter when there's no money in somebody's pocket because they're looking at, you know, Forbidden West coming on PC. Sure. Those kind of things are what's bothering me, is that even the good reviewed games, they get lost. You know, there's yeah, so right. much coming out. Uh, Clipper fan, SAR, $10, Bloodborne remake on PC or a Nintendo game on PC? Okay, okay. Nintendo game on PC before Bloodborne remake happens, for sure. Yeah. Nintendo on PC before. Let me, let me go even farther. Remake. We're going to yeah, see, yeah. We, we have yeah. the chance of seeing Gears of War on PC. PlayStation 5 before we see Bloodborne. Before remake. we see, okay, yeah, that's I'll, that was I'll my joke that. on Twitter, well, but yeah. that that, that yeah. I, I I'll put my foot down we'll, on that. We'll one. see Halo on the fridge. <laughs> the Skyrim, <laughs> Skyrim on your fridge. Remember Skyrim that shit. That's the yeah. thing, though. It sounds mm. so dumb, but even that yeah. shows some of these companies are looking at goofy stuff. I mean, Xbox selling fridges. These companies are I mean, looking at things Amazon we Alexa. just don't think. Amazon. Remember? I don't want to say Skyrim? it. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so I saw that. Thank you very much, Chris, for reminding us, because that game deserves a shout out. And uh, I think it very much is a title that people should play if they liked Disco Elysium, if they look forward to Broken Roads, if they look for if they played. What's the other one that we just talked about um, from uh, Sovereign Syndicate? Tyranny. If they tyranny. like Tyranny, if they like thoughtful games like that, um, mm -hmm. this is this is the way to do it. Powder Keg says Carrick's getting five dimensional layered with the bet now a little bit. A little bit. All right. <laughs> Dude, so, honestly, who who's the is it Blueberry team? Who did the Demon Demon Souls remake? They should they should Blue they should got a blue Yeah. Whoever uh, they are, they did a yeah. fantastic job. They did job, a fantastic yeah. job, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's when Amazing. a remake is a oh, remake. So good. You know? <sighs> so good. Woo. That was such a good game. God damn. I think that Bloodborne is like Assassin's Creed Japan. And that they ha and uh, and for, uh, Hor uh, Forza Horizon Japan that they hold Bloodborne. on to it because they know it's worth something. I truly believe Bloodborne this. Bloodborne is some M Mandela effect shit, dude. It just never existed, man. It's just like a it just it's a figment of everybody's imaginations. All right. What do you guys the think? 30, Make your bets FPS in chat. Dream. I want to hear these, but I want to hear if you guys agree with us or not. The thirty FPS, yeah. what, Abzi? The twenty, sorry, twenty FPS dream. The, the 20 FPS dream everybody had. Dude, you know what's Blue crazy point. to me, Thank though? You. Like, people hacked the PS4 Pros and played Bloodborne at 60 FPS yep. just fine. Yep. Just fine. Yep. It's bothering. It bothers me. <laughs> I personally, just guessing, yeah. just guessing, that it is either like, Ace, it is either like Assassin's Creed, uh, where they're holding it, and they know it's the most loved, long. you know, there's something about it, or there's something behind the scenes with an IP or some kind of ownership or some kind of thing that they're nervous about. And it, by sure. the way, this came up with the Code Veronica remake. I have, I've always said that Code Veronica is the redheaded stepchild of the of the Resident Evil games, just like Fallout uh, New Vegas is, and just like Batman Origins. These titles that are in the series, but because they're made by different people, there's some worries of who gets the remake and who gets the money. Sure. The Code Veronica, I found out later, had some characters in it that were sort of ahead of their time, but they treated those characters poorly, and that might not work with the social zeitgeist currently. Mm. And I had not thought of that in, at all. I was always like, why is Code Veronica was not it? coming? Yeah, there was. I, I believe there were some characters. Did if I don't even remember the game anymore, much of it, but I believe there was a, a one or two characters in there that were like the bad guy that were... Like sure. so, something with sexuality and people were like, would oh. that be treated as like Didn't you're, Capcom you're disliking this or something? Didn't Capcom do a poll of what people would want to see a remake of? I think recently they did, yeah. Didn't was they Code last Veronica part of the poll? Oh dude, what if it wasn't? If it wasn't, then that's it. That like proves to your point, like that's it, that's done. 
you know yeah. if it was yeah. then wow they're thinking about it <laughs> so yeah i just like, can't Hope. believe that you look at these titles like origins one of the best batman games ever made and i'll fight anybody on it i think that i can at least prove to somebody that it's up there with the others minimum if not one of the better ones and you look at Fallout New Vegas, which you like more than I like. Oh, Most people I know. It wasn't part of the poll. Sorry. Yeah, it, it wasn't part, part of the, the poll. poll. No, Garrick, no. Who said that? Well, we're, Dev, Dev Guy says it. I believe Dev Guy if he said it. We're never going to see it ever. We're never going to You're telling see it, me. Dude. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Can somebody, uh, Dev Guy, <laughs> could you, Dev Guy, I don't mean to task you. Could you do me a giant favor, Dev Guy, and like link me in Discord? Uh, the poll or or any indication that it wasn't on the poll because if it's not on the poll that that for sure i think unless they're already making it but i don't see how they wouldn't you know that seems weird that seems weird Ooh. it's it's got to be on the poll. Ooh, that burns man oh that's exactly like when you get the remakes and they they do three but then they don't do you know origins and you you're like what remake five dude of which of which of what of, of, uh, uh, Resident, Evil. Resident Evil. Are you thinking five because of the racial overtones? N oh, Is that I your question? I didn't even think about that. But like, I I feel because but like five took like a huge leap into like the cover shooter space. It, it, it was still, dude. L let me be clear. The co it was one of the best. Like it was a really good co-op game. Not a good Resident Evil game. It was a great like fun. Like I had good mechanics. I think. Um, but it was like a. I don't know. Do you, what? What would? <laughs> How would they remake it is my question. Like, are you still going to, like, punch the ball? Here's what I would do. I Yeah, I would, if I was going to remake it, if I was going to remake it, I would leave any of the, because they, the the land they were in, the racial overtones fit the land that they were in and the story they were trying to tell. Whether sure. that's acceptable, not or now, I would just remake it and say, we're just, we're not, you know, or remaster it, what have you. Um, but I don't know if they would. I don't see Capcom as worrying about that too much. And no, understanding I, I that people would separate church and state now. A game way. being set in Africa, dude. Like, it's just... Uh, the, the, well, the, it wasn't like only that. Yeah. It was, I mean, they I were get, all yeah, zombies, I get, sure. I know. But, like, I know. It was the setting. Like, yeah. it's nothing, it was the setting. Nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah. And I've just never... Just because at they're least... a minority in the States, like, that's going to make a big, you know... Well, when I've talked to anybody who covers games or even game makers, no one's ever brought that up. It's actually been the discussion forums that bring that up. It's not been makers of games. So there's a chance. But also, when I ask those same people, why do we not see New Vegas? Or why do we not see... Um, origins, they do state the thing about the IPs and all that. Why do we so not I think see? that's real. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And why don't we see Bloodborne? Everybody uh, seems to assume yeah. Bloodborne is being held. Either there's that issue or it's being held just like Assassin's Creed Japan was being held until they felt they needed to do it. And um, Forza Horizon Japan has been held, and a lot of people are under the impression that when they finally say, like, this is Japan, That'll be the yeah. the premier. That may be the last big Forza Horizon for a little while mm -hmm. before they rejigger it. Because the one thing about Forza Horizon, I feel, is that I'm getting a little tired of the festival. You know, it's like what it's all the festival that Horizon oh, takes that. place in. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's the yeah, same yeah. story <laughs> all the time. You know, you're just like, yeah. all right, it's a festival. Yeah. You know, they have the festival over the trappings of it. And here's what I would love to see from a Forza Horizon: no festival. Just people out there racing cars in Japan. Yeah. And they're just I like, to you know, Tokyo like, drift in it. And there's like none of this. underground street racing. Or underground you know? street racing, cool. yeah. Building really your really own cool. little underground club, getting a couple cars, yeah. hiring yeah. mechanics. Like some, put like, a little you know, sim in there. for speech shit. Some yep. old, like, oh, that would be yep. great. Rub, yeah. a little, rub up a little midnight sim club. in there and just see where it goes. Yeah, yeah Midnight Club. Embrace yeah. the Carbon. Um, carbon Midnight Club. Dude. There was a couple of those older ones. What if... What if they can do the everything, like the everything game? Like there's like, okay, Forza Horizon and like whatever you got the open world and you got all these like w w crazy races and drift, drifts and stuff. But as a person, you can also like have a career in like an actual yeah. legit kind of right. tracks and stuff. And it's like all of a sudden a sim racer. Yep. Yeah, oh. I, I, I do. I do. I have accidentally driven my sports car into gravel and I can tell you. <laughs> If they do sim, everybody's fucked. So I think they might not do that because <laughs> no, no, I mean like half, half, you know, he, half, half. Yeah, yeah, it would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Juiced was another one. Juiced, thank you. Juiced. Um, and and Richardson says, remember, it's the same thing for you, Carrick, but it's something fresh for someone entering the series. He's bringing that up, and he did a tongue emoji because he knows I say that all the time. You're absolutely right. I am simply saying 
I think they could still have some kind of get together like underground racing versus the festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you ever play Test Drive Unlimited 2? No, but I played one. I didn't even know two was out. Maybe two came. Maybe it was two that I played. Driver. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All those were what, great. Was it, wasn't there, there was one driver where you could like telepathically switch to someone switch else or some to shit? other cars. Yeah, you could switch, switch cars, cars in that way. Yeah. yeah. Weird game. It's goofy. Goofy. Um, so back to PlayStation, Xbox, Sony, yes. all of those are changing. Moving on from there, though. So Namco mm. has now added itself to the square, to the square Pathion of companies announcing that they're actually going to make good games. It, it is there. Yeah. Here's why I'm telling everybody to look at patterns and see what's changing in the market. So originally Square two weeks ago stated that, okay, what we're doing isn't working. We're going to start releasing quality games and less of them. And now Namco this morning said the same thing. And what did they bring up? Armored Core 6's sales not being great. Here's what blows me away. Armored Core 6 was good, Mm -hmm. which goes to what I was saying. If you look at when Armored Core 6 released, it released between five other games. Yeah. So, and Starfield and yeah. So this idea of releasing quality games, I also think is a little bit of a Trojan horse. Yeah, Say yeah. it that way, but in real life, what you're you may not change a ton, but what you may do is start pushing things out and being like, you know, it, it, what, what because if, Armored Core was quality for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think? Um, I think like ninety percent of the games released in twenty twenty three were long term, uh, like. L- you know, big development games, like big kind of um, slow releasing games, like stuff that has been worked on for a while. Do you think um, they're trying to move to, they're, they're not saying like uh, the, our games need to be good, but maybe um, we're going to do like fewer, but like more hype, big releases. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely do. And even if they're not big hype, they wanted to hype like Armored Core more than they were able yeah. to because the PR cycle was glutted. And mm-hmm. I did a 60 second review on that because I didn't even have time to do a full edit and, you know, get all the footage and be like, and, uh, you know, put it together. There were so many other games crunched down there, but you bet they're going to. Yeah, they're going yeah. there. And the ability to push a big game as being more important. Armored Core 6 is a tried and true sequel for the most part. And one that returned to a franchise that hasn't been around for Super what a decade. Niche. So yeah. it is niche, but it did insanely well. And I think they wanted it to do insanely weller. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'll just make that word. I think they wanted it to do even better. And they realize we sh- we need to stretch our shit out a little bit. Also, longer development behooves developers continuing in their job. That's the other thing I'm really happy about. Because mm-hmm. we know that well, many Japan companies... Japan didn't see any cuts. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. okay. For the most that is part. not necessarily... Right. For the most part, yeah. <laughs> but you, what I was going to bring up was that when companies ship the game, layoffs are usual because you're going from build to maintenance. I would love to see the longer build pattern, right? I would love that, you know, even if it's a smaller team. But let's say you have a slightly smaller team, 10 less people, but you keep them on for a year longer. That's good for the industry, man. It's good to keep those people working. Don't get the brain drain. Don't don't lay off your staff. Don't, you know. And then maybe you have another game ready to be built when you finish this other one, be smarter with your money. Some of these companies, yeah. I think, were throwing a bunch of people at it and then terminating huge, them. Yeah, there's a huge difference between companies that like grow their de- their developers rather than like yeah. comp- keep switching out and renting and contracting. Yep, like yep. it's a way you got more cohesive shit for sure. Um, somebody was saying also the PlayStation uh, CEO had stated that uh, Sony is saying that the PS5 is in its latter half, and I think that that's pretty accurate. I think that that's pretty accurate. Latter half is also the best half for me. The mm-hmm. couple years after that first release, when people get the juice and they understand the console, that's the that's the Halo later ones. That's Gears later. That's like once they start really getting good with the system, we start getting those amazing games that are such a big jump from the first ones. So I'm excited for that. Um, I was going to bring something else up. We were talking about the layoffs. We were talking about that. Damn. There was one other thing. Damn it. I can't the remember. Mortals thing? Mm-mm. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, it, it, it's going to be exciting to see these companies change. They won't be the only ones, man. I think we're going to see a lot of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just going to bring up that Epic, sorry, not Epic, Embracer, oh. you know, their their failure. I keep <laughs> that trying... makes me shudder. I, I know. <laughs> I know, dude. And I was yeah. explaining, so we had a behind the scenes, like, but, you know, sort of 
a podcast in the Discord three or four days ago where one of the things I was pointing out to, we had a huge group in there and we were talking about like some of the behind the scenes stuff that happens in game reviews and games. One of the things I'd also pointed out that when you look at Embracer Group, let's say it was a $2 billion deal that they lost, that magnifies mm -hmm. because of the people that you would have kept that would have mm -hmm. stayed in the industry, that would have been purchasing things within the industry. That's more like four or $5 billion. So that's a massive hit if you count it across multiple years. It was an investment, which means the money was going to grow. So now that the investment is gone, you have to sell. Your, they're selling IPs at a lower amount, which is what we talked about on Friday. So, for yeah. example, if I'm Embracer and I'm doing well and I put this IP up for sale, it it isn't connected to this company that's had all these issues. And it can be worth, you can sell it alone. And one of the rumors somebody was saying was that Embracer was looking to sell a couple of their games in a bundle, which means like, what, three or four bad games and one good IP, right? And that sucks because a lot of these companies are also not doing great or yeah. are also, let's say, holding back. It sucks, man. The Embracer, the Embracer thing was, uh, but I don't know if you were in this podcast. I think Johnny or somebody brought it up that it's it's all, it's also a sign that they didn't invest. They saw the yeah. writing on the wall. Do you get my drift? Mm -hmm. So not mm -hmm. only was it that Embracer screwed up, but the Saudis who were going to invest chose mm -hmm. not to because they saw something in the finances going forward. So to me, that that indicates everybody's seen it, whether we want to yeah. admit it or not, that there's, you know, that there's a little bit of a crunch down going on things. But yeah. Uh PS5 still hasn't even justified itself with games yet. Hmm. PS5 Man, hasn't mo justified like most, itself with games yet. Most of PS5's uh most of P I don't, this is so weird because PS4 sold so well. Mm -hmm. For example, okay, Switch brought in, you know, remastered or brought in or ported games from the Wii U. The Wii U didn't sell that much. It was it made a lot of sense for Switch to do that and, uh, you know, double dip, triple dip, whatever. I feel like for most of PS5's existence, it's just like playing the older games at 60 FPS or playing like <clears throat> old right. games at 60 FPS, at least their first party stuff. Um, okay. We only got a couple that fully utilized and like we're only on PS5 and stuff. So I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, it's true. Um, I mean, compare it to the PS4's life cycle. I think by now PS4 had like a bunch of shit that was like just, you know, this is the new generation. I still feel like with PS5, we're, it still feel, feels like the, the current gen is in its early days. It's weird. It's been it's been out for like three, four years, two, three, three, four years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus Christ, three, four years, four years. Because PS5, Almost. PSVR was last year, and PS5 I think was the year prior to the year prior to that. I can't remember. Which. Yeah, yeah. But like there were some like great ones. I mean, like you know, obviously. You know, I mean, Spider-Man Two was Spider available only on PlayStation Five because of Final the Fantasy. you know the NVMe and stuff. I think one True. big problem is when something sells really good, only Nintendo leaves it behind. Most companies won't don't leave those games behind. Nintendo is mm -hmm. one of the only companies that's like oh backwards compatibility, you know, and they yeah. They just moved forward. I think with Sony, they held on to the PS4 for so long and wanted cross-gen games because, goddamn, those things sold well. And they yeah. were good. PS4, mm -hmm. dude, some of those games when the PS4 launched, Xbox originally even had some good games, but it was it obviously of a lesser hardware quality. But you saw those yeah. games on PlayStation, you were like, mm-hmm. And I think it is harder when you're doing that with the PlayStation 4, and then you get the 5, and like you said, you see 60 FPS, and you're like, oh, well... Console gamers may be a little less requiring 60 FPS. They want more to augment the purchase than yeah. But they they became so obsessed else. with it though. Now like uh -huh. it's a done deal. Now 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 they can't go back. Now everybody just wants 60 FPS because they've done that. So now when they play 30 FPS, they're gonna bitch about it. You know that's an unfortunate thing. Yeah. Well, uh, in three weeks we need to make a note to talk about this because there's right. some things happening about 30 fps 60 what a game looks like what it doesn't uh you saw the playstation uh demo for final fantasy um rebirth Re mm -hmm. rebirth right and um mm -hmm. there's some issues there with performance and what the game I looks heard, like yeah. right now yeah so mm -hmm. there's going to be some like interesting fuzziness. There's going to be some interesting discussion on who can take advantage yeah. of the PS5, I guess, would be mm -hmm. the would be the best. And what kind of game can take advantage of the improvements 
where the PS4 was really improved. PS4, dude, can you, does it blow you away that the PS4 and the Xbox were basically mobile chips and they did so well? They're, those yeah. are mobile Jaguar chips, man. No. Yeah. Those yeah. are powerful little suckers, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy yeah. when you think of how powerful those call and what they were able to do. Kill zone resistance with the glass and sh uh, kill zone resistance, right? So the first one that came out on the PS4, yeah, with the glass right? and the skyscraper, Resistance? yeah, dude. The one in the and, beginning where it's oh, with your dad, yes, yeah. man, or yeah, Spider Man so even when you were swinging around, you're like, I, mm -hmm. what are you? I mean, this is fucking nuts. And so I get, I get where you're coming from. Sixty isn't as big of a, it is a big jump, but it's the jump I gamers the only... don't appreciate as much. They want, yeah, but they like they don't appreciate the power required. Yeah, I just feel like what's more interesting to me, I mean, don't get me wrong, like the one thing that I think that really pushed games to the next gen is the NVMe thing, obviously, because now it's a baseline. So mm -hmm. more games, like more concepts are being done, Shadow utilizing fall. that. But that's, I feel like that's the only thing we saw um, that is like more like revolutionary or whatever. Yeah. Like more, you know, other than that, games have, uh, are, you know, more or less the same. We're just getting new stories, new cool mechanics and stuff. We're not getting... Like, we're not, like, stepping into next-gen, really. You know what I mean? We're just getting better performance and shit. So, yeah. better graphics. Yeah. Um, I think this is Woodpot Pit says, I think consoles are reaching a point of diminishing returns. And I got to say, personally, I don't because of their cost mm. versus a PC and a video card, which is mm. ridiculous. But I do get the idea because people don't realize 60 FPS versus 30, even with the same res, is a massive CPU increase. You really yeah. do have to figure yeah, out no how to shit, do it. Dude, you, have to, you have to do all the calculations yeah. and double the speed, by the it's way. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Whenever and, uh, yeah. you saw it, I saw it. We see it with con <laughs> with uh, game cards. You'll get a game card and somebody will be like, oh, it's got, it does yeah. this and this, but it's got poor texture uh, VRAM. And you're like, oh, yeah, no, because yeah. now I'm going to have VRAM thrashing. I'm going to have like stuttering when it's trying to load the textures in. But the speed is great. And so it's like, okay, yeah. you can run lower textures but it's 60 fps there is people are just not getting that these games are so detailed now but i do understand yeah. why somebody thinks jumping into ps5 may not be the it they haven't done a great job or they haven't done a job of saying you have to get a ps5 because this is only possible spider-man 2 is a good example but it when you saw spider-man 1 and then 2 you didn't see the i think a lot of us saw just two mm -hmm. you and i saw the nvme be at use mm -hmm. But the, the the true, you know, in the way they were doing things. But yeah, yeah. interesting, yeah. man. 120 seems like overkill. I would say for a console, 120 right now is probably overkill. What do you think? Yeah, 100%. What do you think about 120 FPS as a whole? Uh, uh, on my PC, I mean, uh, you know, I think 120 FPS is like the, you know, over 120 FPS, I don't really care that much. You know, 144, okay. 160, I feel like I don't like really care that much uh, unless I'm... You know, that's maybe fair. csgo or something like crazy like shooter or whatever but 120 fps seems like the you know i i like it perfectly on the pc i think 120 fps is perfect even 90 honestly 90 is great too yep um but uh, on console man i just don't want it to be I, I i don't want the next gen to just up the the frame rate to 120. Okay. i don't want that to be the, the, the case man please please yeah i i gotta tell you 90 to me i can tell yeah. when i'm playing very rarely that it's 90 to 120. Sorry, my I brother can... just came in from a flight. Hey, come say hi to 25,000 people watching. Yeah, 25,000 people <laughs> fully, fully playing. Sorry, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, that's all right. I was just going to say that I can tell the difference between 30 and 60 massively. You can tell the difference between mm -hmm. 60 and 90 somewhat. Once I get to 90 and 120, the difference, unless it's a very particular game and how yeah. often I notice it, I would say my gameplay doesn't improve dramatically. Or the mm -hmm. experience doesn't improve to 120. I would I would say and 60 is the sweet spot for especially now, especially on controller because the polling rate, no, like the on polling mouse, rate on a controller. Feel, yeah, yeah, you absolutely. won't. I don't care. Controller, I'll play 60. Absolutely, just fine. that's a yeah. very good point, and it's one of the reasons why I just Intel. It's why I talked about it last week. I want until we get a different input solution for the controllers. Until yeah. the the solution is somehow here? differently. Yeah. I mean, dude, mouse and keyboard hasn't changed in fucking <laughs> 55 years, right? <laughs> yeah, Has it? Yeah. It hasn't. It's Commodore 64. Okay. Dude, I could tell. I, I bet you I could grab a mouse from, <laughs> what, 20 years ago? And as long as it's USB or whatever, not notice some massive change to the way anything plays. Consoles stayed the same, except for the analog stick being added. 
the second yeah. analog stick being added was a big change. But I don't know, man. I don't see on console gyro. I think gyro aiming has a partial place, but it's not yeah. really anything big like a mouse and keyboard. I mean, I mouse think and I use gyro in like Splatoon or some shit. Right. Yeah. In a couple but, games, I've tried it out, fun. and it's been good yeah. for the def like fine like, tuning. Fine tuning, but then you have games where yeah. if it's already on a controller, it's probably got auto aim anyway or a soft sure. aim assist. So it's like gyro can fuck that up. You have to turn that off. Then you have to adjust the gyro to make sure the right. gyro isn't so sensitive that your character's going... Calibration. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, ACG, if consoles go to 90 or 120, most console players would need a new screen, no? Yes, you are. You are actually correct. Um, not only that, but there are a ton of TVs that have fake 120. So there's all kinds of issues with that. Um, all kinds. Uh, it's it's sort of up in the air on, on what we're going to see. I think HDR was the big, the big failure here. HDR is what everybody bet on and yeah. what everybody improved. And look at HDR's massive orphaned status. I mean, some games are not shipping with HDR at all. No desire to put HDR in their games. Some oh, companies God, are like, HDR. no, another we're not calibration chaos. I, I don't know. I don't get how people still think graphics is the only thing that makes like 60 FPS to 30 FPS. Like, you just explained that it's like CPU is a big part of it yeah. as well. And doing CPU's those calculations, huge. double the speed. It's not just graphics. There's like systems. There's, yeah. If you want interesting new systems, you just, that's, yeah. If we know. stuck at people, 4K and we stuck at just graphics. 4K 60 yeah. with a huge increase in CPU or GPU, dude, what I'm seeing is particles. What I'm seeing is lighting, not even just ray tracing. I'm talking about true, yeah. you know, like, well, that is true lighting. What I'm talking about is other types of lighting that aren't just attached to the uh, to the ray tracing, other types of lumen. things you can do. And, yeah. and Lumen and all those, that's where I would like to see the future. I don't, if somebody says 8K, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. If somebody says 120, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what you're talking yeah. about. Well, <laughs> I would rather see 60, 4K, locked 60, and yeah. crank the fucking reflections not cyberpunk you have to go into a special thing to see your character's fucking face for three seconds i'm talking oh, spider-man but elevated to like true 100 percent reflections no matter how far away you are that shit would be that's yeah. where the magic and like you said systems ai systems that updated more quickly i don't want to see any Object game permanence. dude how many times have we looked at a game even a brand new one and a guy yeah. far away updates at 15 frames per second and he's like you see birds in like Monster Hunter going like, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? or corpses huh? not disappearing, or corpses you know, not, like... yeah, all kinds of crazy shit like that. That's yeah. that type of stuff. Fucking um, locational Physics. damage and yep. enemies, you know, reacting and you know the, this new step. That's what affects FPS as well. You know, that's yeah. the stuff I care about more. Yeah, yeah. Physics is a mass. I mean, that's like one of the biggest FPS destroyers there is. You know, because it's <laughs> yeah. all CPU bound. Well, not all of it, but a lot of it is. 8K is still not yeah. standard anyway. No, we're saying we don't want 8K to be standard. I've seen an 8K oh, TV oh, oh. with 8K native. Footage. What do you want your PPI to be like pixel per inch? Like, well, see, what, what, that's how, the thing, right? That matter you, you nobody talked TV. about this years ago, Abzi. The only yeah. time they talked about it was VR, but VR is a massive yeah. TV near your eyes, so PPI becomes important. You, like in yeah. the past, it yeah, was never sure. important. You know, it was like well, you never heard like anybody talking a, about it. Like a 100 inch, inch screen, like 20 yep. feet away from my TV, and I want 8K. Yep. Yeah. 1080, you know, 60 inch TV, and now you're looking at a pixel this far away from another one. Not that bad, <laughs> yeah. but you get my drift. Where you're like, okay, now yeah. I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't get me. Uh, don't get me started on how inconsistent games are with HDR. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we. It's that, everything. Not just the games. There's the games that are inconsistent with it. The TVs are inconsistent with it. The the OS. Like, there's so much shit at play. Yep. Your own tweaking. Like, you just, good luck. <laughs> I don't know, man. Let's I don't ask know what's chat. supposed to look good. Either yeah, do I. Yeah. Chat. What do you guys want to see? FPS go to 120. Do you want to see 8K? Do you want to see? And and let's not be smart asses because we can do that at any time. I'm asking for some real. This is what happens on Twitter. I ask a question, people are smart asses. I'm like, I'm, I need this. I need this data for the discussion. For the discussion, like, what do you want to see? We know people take shortcuts. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying true um, improvements with a positive slant. What do you want to see? Like, you would love to see more particles, reflections, um, AI improvements. We we get that games don't all have that right now, so we know the negatives. What I'm saying is, what would you love to see in the future in games, in graphics technology um, that you would like to see that really makes a scene look more alive, even if it's an artistic rendition like uh, Wind Waker? Like, what would you mm. guys like to see? 
We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, for console, yeah. Well, it doesn't even have to be for console because I think with PC, PC titles, they're still aiming at 4K. If you're playing 8K on a PC title, you're probably playing an older one and really you're misusing all the shit you have. You should be cranking shadows mm -hmm. and shit. Ambient occlusion mm -hmm. was a big improvement. Whenever I turn it off, I forget how bad games looked without ambient occlusion. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and yet it yeah. really is tough on the fucking processors, it, man. It, it feels like it increases the detail in a game. You know, it feels it like everything absolutely. becomes Absolutely. More... <laughs> 3D, right? Yeah. You see like a yeah, planter yeah, yeah. with ambient occlusion on the edge of that planter. And you're like, oh, yeah. even if they have shadows, ambient occlusion does that soft depth. And yeah, I, I need to get John back on so we can talk in particular about what effect. I, I, I think for the most part, I know, but what effect eats the most? I think for me, whenever I'm playing games, ambient occlusion at high versus low usually mm -hmm. is like seven to 14 frames per second. Ambient occlusion is a big one. Shadows and shaders Shadows. are usually like really, really lighting Textures stuff. Textures do usually... not affect my video no, cards. No, they haven't affected no, my video just, cards in like three shadows, years. Shadows, dude. Yeah. It's like the, yeah. the automatically in a game, if I, uh, yeah. if I had like bad FPS, like shadows. That's it. Absolutely. Shadows, and and I still believe yeah. that when I see the sharp shadows, sometimes they look yeah. worse and I actually yeah. like the I game. I like the more blurry At, one, yeah. Yeah, so do I. I'll, I'll be like, low. you know what? Medium or low is actually completely better or it yeah. feels better when i'm playing it than yeah. that sharp you know you'll turn it up and ubisoft will I've show you the so sample many times where like high is better than ultra for shadow like it just absolutely looks or than, clouds yeah. on assassin's creed games where you go to ultra <laughs> and it's like 25 frames less and you're all the cloud looks yeah. no fucking different than it yeah, did yeah i mean yeah. Her, forbidden west when you because have you played forbidden west yet you haven't right or you have yeah on the ps5 yeah dude in the clouds Whew, man or Avatar. If you played Avatar yet, when you you can fly above the storm systems in Avatar, holy shit, that looks good. Yeah. And that's now. Yeah. That's that's like I mean, consoles are looking that good. Um yeah. asking people what their thoughts are. Let's see what they're saying. 60 FPS, 1440p to 4K is what Jay Reaper wants. That's a, a really very solid. Bathroom. No worries. That's a very Please. solid answer, Jay. I think that's very fair. Um Sikav, Sikav, if I got that right, 60 FPS, 4K, better AI, better physics, especially no static meshes anymore would be fun. Um, HDR, uh, 60 FPS, all the other stuff. Oh, okay. So you you want HDR improved? Or I'm reading that wrong, actually. All the other stuff, then 60, then HDR. Or am I reading that wrong? Uh, better, uh, a better upscaling tech, maybe. I think upscaling techs are getting good, though. That's That's one thing. IP Gaming says, "What? Uh, what's up, HCG? What are your thoughts on Sony not releasing any first-party games until spring of next year? So we talked about that a little bit earlier, but I can add to it um, in that particular one. This is something that we knew sort of looking at their release schedule, service games, stuff that leaked. Microsoft as well having a gap. Both of these gaps I we talked about earlier, we wish could be filled a little bit by a delayed game or two. That's pretty much what we came away in the discussion with, was that we would have loved to have seen one or two games delayed. Uh, it does suck for both of those console makers. Console should be 60 FPS 4K or 1440p. What's up, Silver? Nice seeing you around. Uh, Kira says, I can't handle crystal clear sharp graphics. I don't even see the world as real and as crisp as clear. And crisp and clear as the games. <laughs> it's true. That is true, right? That is true. Sometimes you'll see a game and you'll be like, this looks so sharp it can cut my fucking eyes. Um... Kig says, I would say keep it at 60, 1440, or 4K, and keep improving on other things in the game. I will point out, I do software suggests occasionally, everything from everything.exe. If you're a Windows user and you want an amazing search uh, for your drives, you can replace Windows Search with everything.exe. Um, compress UI is absolutely excellent when you want to compress files on your PC and you don't want to be held to the two compressions that Windows has. Uh, it's actually compressed GUI is what it's called. But another software I want to suggest for people, it's $5. It's on Steam. It's called Lossless Scale, and it allows for frame interpolation for any game now. And there have been some massive gains. This is a guy who is so smart. He also wrote his own upscaling that replaces FSR as well as NVIDIA's. And I got to admit to you guys, on some games, I think it looks better with a less FPS hit than FSR and uh, DLSS. So if you have Steam, go check it out. It's called Lossless Scale. It is incredible. You can even use it on the Lenovo or any of your Windows devices. And I've been seeing people do a Legion games playing Starfield at 60 FPS. Some crazy stuff with that. So you should check it out. Um, he was just asking what we thought about Sony also having that gap in IP sales. But I told him we pretty mm -hmm. much already talked about it. 
Most mm -hmm. people are saying 1440p or 4K, and I would say, yeah, 1440p upscaled to 4K looks pretty goddamn good these days mm -hmm. with the upscalers. Mm -hmm. You you play 1440p, I'm, I'm right? Yeah, I'm happy with it, but um, I, I I still get the little thing in my head where it's like I have a 4090, and I kind of want to do like 4K OLED. You know, I heard you right. know John sold me on it because everybody been talking about OLED, but then John like really it was like really sold me on it and. Uh, the 4K, I'm like so happy with 1440p, but I have like a, I have a little fear of upgrading to 4K where it's like, oh shit, but I'm going to get like less FPS. You know what you could yeah, do? Man. You could just, DLSS? Wait, DLSS yeah, too. yeah, you could just run them all DLSS? at 1440p and upscaled and you would yeah, still yeah, get yeah. insanely Absolutely. good FPS. You, you know, DL, like I don't really, I, I like in gameplay when, if I put DLSS versus like DLAA, like it's like very minuscule difference. Yeah. And that's Very also, nice. there's other settings you can do that make DLSS look better by softening things or, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. But I would say OLED and micro LED, all the Samsung stuff, all the LG stuff, those are huge improvements, dude. They're noticeable. But if you're happy with where you are, I would wait until happy. until they not only they're dropping in prices, which is phenomenal. There's some amazing TVs at good prices, but I would wait until they solidify all their other stuff because there are still TVs with terrible latency outside of game mode. And what people yeah. don't admit and what I was always trying to sell, because when I was selling TVs, I was always like, dude, if you want to test your TV for games, you have to turn game mode on. But guess what game mode does? Turns off all your processing, which is the right. picture you may like. And so yeah. now we're getting TVs that are doing game mode and out of game mode with really good latencies, but they're not what you're accustomed to. They're not one yeah. MS. They're yeah. not five. Some are and and in the panels, 10. Like monitor panels are really expensive, I think, for OLED. Yeah, and yeah. once stuff, you start and... adding that stuff, then you start like, and then, dude, the biggest problem is their OS's suck balls. When you buy a mm -hmm. monitor, there's no OS. When you buy a mm -hmm. TV, Almost all the TVs have OSs, and depending on their upgrade schedule, like Samsung uses Tizen, which is a fake Android, and you can't install like normal Android apps on it, and it's slow later on. Even my Samsung HDR that I like the TV, its apps are slow. So if you try to like just switch HDMI, it's not this. It's like, mm. yeah. it, it's yeah. like a Ubisoft G GUI. It's like the, it's like <laughs> soft cursor. <laughs> So yeah, I would wait yeah. until you get somebody who says their OS is pristine and their upgrade schedule. Sony also sold a couple TVs that they said were going to have V-Sync and all this stuff, and they still haven't added it. So you got these issues with some companies not supporting the TVs. I would just wait until you really, maybe your TV, maybe your monitor dies, you know, or, or for some reason you're starting to notice almost all games are 4K. Then I would say it's worth it. Or you I see an like, OLED like, you love. Like, Apparently it's just everything's so crisp. Anyway, on at least on this thirty-two inch, like it's like, do I like maybe maybe when I s oh switch, I'll be like, oh my god, you know, Wait. I switched. But would you switch to a thirty-two? I have a thirty-two inch. Would you switch to a thirty-two? Would you stay the same size? Oh no, I'd have to go larger. You would. Do you know why you would have to go yeah. larger? Because why? most thirty-two inch and smaller TVs do not actually have all of the HDR slash brightness settings that a forty does because of the size of the screen. So yeah. my space is 42, and even I have found TVs, multiple TVs from Samsung, actually state clearly, 42 and lower use this panel, completely different panel than yeah. the ones above yeah, yeah. it. So Makes if you sense. go for, yeah, you it, 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 right now you're stuck with the Predators, you know, the super expensive, smaller monitors. You can still mm -hmm. get some, it's just that there's always a caveat on the smaller ones. It, it's right. sort of a thing that's, discuss that they just don't want to shove it all into a small monitor yet and you yeah. know we haven't seen a, a number of I great ones that game. are that small yeah. i mean 42 is pretty big for me i told you i've got sick a couple times because mine's yeah. so big and you'll be like looking and i think you're going to be a better player at a 32 than a 42 because you don't have to look to see bad guys yeah, yeah. you know you're yeah. you're like you everything is in your vision like everything is on in the my small yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah um and if you're happy with 1440p, I mean, that's great. I'm happy. Like, I am yeah. happy. I just sometimes it gnaws at me. It's like, oh, well, I might as well because I have a 4090, you know. IP Gaming says all these software processing and frame gen, DLSS, XELS, they're all just band-aids. They don't ever look that good. Stick to native. Boy, can I not disagree more. Not only Forever? do I not agree with that, saying that 4K always looks a great deal better than DLSS. Not only do I not agree with that, I would say that frame gen isn't only going to replace 
a, a frame gen and DLSS and XCSS not only are going to replace native, I can't wait till they do. If I because game... we mm -hmm. are seeing huge gains in image quality. I mean, even John was talking about that from Digital Foundry was here and going like, dude, DLSS, XCSS, Intel's new version is getting better by leaps and bounds. And yeah. you're starting to see more detail in the DLSS ones than in the native ones, which is pretty crazy. Because also say, native... Sorry. If if a game doesn't have DLAA, I do DLSS because like uh, it's just simply better anti-aliasing than than temporal or whatever. Um, I just feel like it just looks better, even even if it is upscaled. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean they're they're just they're doing incredible work on it. I mean I would say mm -hmm. I've told you this before, but it's like when I was growing up, V8s were a thing, and the idea of a turbo made no sense. The idea of a small engine doing well was just not a thing. And then as they got better, you were like, oh shit. They're onto something. And to me, mm -hmm. DLSS, XESS, all those are turbo. And mm -hmm. in the in the old days, we'd be like 8K is the thing, 4K is the thing. And now we're starting to see all these crazy fixes that is just yeah. nuts. Um yeah. Nurb says frame gen still has a ton of flaws, like ghosting and input latency. Yeah, not a ton though. In in fact, not only have we seen um there's been two improvements made. Luke, uh Ross, the guy who does the um the patron mods he's been improving vr uh late uh, vr dlss greatly with his mods but there's um the guy that i said from lossless scale who's actually improved on the hardware versions it's pretty crazy um mm -hmm. but i think when we're looking at it we're starting to see situations where ghosting in particular is almost completely gone from the new fsrs and dlss's and when you look at ghosting versus not getting the fps that you need sorry uh, i'll go with a little ghosting to get the FPS I need without spending yeah. twelve hundred dollars on forty ninety. Deal, man. Yeah. yeah. And then Turbo Diesel Powder Keg says you are true. You are right, but Turbo Diesel threw us threw a wrench in that one. Um, if you can't see the difference, then it's a win. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that's where w you look at it, and that's like where we're coming. Frame by frame, analyzing every right scene. pixel beeping. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I teased pixel John. Beeping. I was like, John, John's one of the greatest guys in the world because he he can pixel peep. And then still play a game that doesn't look the greatest and not get all, you know, tight. Oh, yeah, 100%. About it. And he's aware of it. He's like, yeah, well, obviously, I'm doing it It's because we're a digital foundry. But it's not like I play games pixel peeping, you know? Yeah, yeah. And especially if you don't like the anti-aliasing so solutions that we're starting to see, which a lot of us don't. I mean, right. for example, I would say almost every anti-aliasing solution currently, I do not like the look of anymore. SMAA you was like nice DLAA? for the time. DLAA, DLAA is a little bit more intensive than I would like. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm, I don't really love it. I don't really love I really it. There's like some, it. I've been there, having good. Uh... Th there's some times where I think it's worth what I, you know, what it costs and is worth the look, but sometimes I'm just not a big fan of it. And yeah. we've seen a companies try all kinds of stuff. NVIDIA had like the Antimorphic or something that was even in the oh, NVIDIA yeah, there's panel. There's so many crazy ones. There's SMAA, yeah. FXA, TAA. Fucking... SMAA was incredible at the time. But yeah. in the old days, SMAA would do the entire screen, including mm -hmm. letters, which would make the yeah. letters soft. And I would add it to games with, uh, what's the thing? Reshade. I would add right. it anyway and just be like, okay, it's, you know, it looks amazing until I have to read language. But now we're getting all this kind of anti-aliasing and upscaling that's, do, that's using um, AI to do it. And they're figuring out that's a letter. Don't yeah. soften that, you know, which is yeah. phenomenal, man. I mean, we're getting so many improvements. Pixel peeping sounds like a really old adult game. Yeah, pixel peeping is when you grab that, you know, normal gamers who would normally be happy with a game, watch a digital foundry, which I love. I, I, I watch John's video. I watch almost all their videos religiously, but they pixel peep. And if you get caught up in pixel peeping versus looking at the game and playing the game and the artistry, you're going to be an unhappy person. You're going to be, and we've had a couple people in here who've done just that, you know, who, who, mm -hmm. who like get, who get, too tight on on what a thing you know the per, the perfection um moving on from there square namco both announced the uh delays to games or longer delivery times um we've got 15 months for microsoft which was a couple months ago when that was shown in the documents so probably around the exact same time as as uh sony i'm assuming that means ghost of shishima march or after of next year right mm -hmm. do you think so Ghost of Tsushima 2, yeah. Why did they wait so long for it? I do not know. Oh, two, two. two. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about a port. 
No, I think with yeah, Ghost yeah. of Tsushima too, they really want to increase the resolution and everything to take care to take advantage of the PS5. And it's going to mm -hmm. be something they're going to whether it be the wind, whether it'll be fucking air molecules you'll watch, I don't know. They're going to do something that'll make you go, "Oh shit, that's only on the PS5." You know, yeah, the yeah. grass in Ghost of Tsushima I liked, but there were times where it looked a little you know, hedgy now that you think about it a year or two later. I, you know what I hope they improve oh. is uh, stealth. I hope they improve like stealth AI and yeah. mechanics and stuff. I hope, I hope they give it a little more love. Um, and the rock, paper, scissors things. Uh, what about a bigger world? It. Do you want to see a bigger Ghost of Tsushima uh, too? I think we will. Um, but like, that's not like the biggest priority for me. I hope we see more like uh, more bu more uh, buildings and shit. I, I hope it'll be more... Uh, Oh, you mean you want to see more urban? Side. You want to see some want to urban see more stuff? Urban. I want to see more urban, yeah. More more, more villages. More bigger villages. Yeah. yeah. I always like buildings and stuff in those types of games. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they'll do, but I just feel that since it's on the PS5 and we haven't heard anything for so long, that they are, mm -hmm. you know, like diving deep and trying to do something that is like visually you're just going to be like oh my god because they did that with their other games they too did that. yeah you know they even, even second, second son, son. You, dude yeah, yeah. sorry yeah, <laughs> yeah we talked over the yeah. infamous second son is yeah. despite all my other issues with some of the acting and stuff that game you're playing it just even now you look at it yeah. and you're like what yeah. the fuck that game looks yeah. incredible yeah dude infamous was wow how many years ago was infamous second son Six, 2013, seven, 2014. Oh, longer yeah, like night. Really? Eight, nine years. I think so. Wait, let's Damn. see. Here. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. Uh, let's see. Reading. So Ghost of Tsushima 2 going to be a system seller for sure. 2014. Yeah. yeah like seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, ten years. Sorry. Whoa. It's been a decade. Yeah. March 20. Yeah. It's been a decade. <laughs> Has it been a decade? Really? <laughs> it's man. Been a decade. Oh. Here's the thing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being brutally honest, man. There are some mm -hmm. games that still come out right now that don't look as good as Infamous Second Son. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, we talk about Red Dead, but look at Infamous Second Son. I mean, that game is incredible looking. Uh, yeah. Did it have the best everything? No, but it, no. Uh, no, neither do the games I'm talking about that came out, you know, this year yeah. or last year. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Let's move on from there and talk. Let's let me read a couple of these and then I'll get to some of the questions. We got a bunch of stuff. We're only at we've done we've covered a lot. We're two hours in. Yeah, we did. Um, oh shit. Okay. All right, here we go. Yes. <clears throat> these are from patrons. Iggy's P. And thank you, people, for or, for uh, collecting these from the patron for me. You know who you are. Uh, did you see IGN's coverage of Suicide Squad? I don't like the game. But they were torn apart for being wrong in over nine instances in their coverage. What gives? <clears throat> if they're selling themselves with IGN first videos and wake bitching on Twitter about not getting codes, but then can't get basic coverage right, why do they get coverage at all? So I did see, yeah, I did see a couple videos where people were tearing up reviews. Um, I don't know if the person who does the video does the editing, though. And I, I, I brought that up, too. Should they check? Absolutely. Should they verify that what they're talking about is on the screen? Sure. I have the same problem. I've definitely missed it. I've had people call me out on it and say, you were describing this. I wish you would have showed footage. Sometimes you can't. I think with the stuff that they were talking about, you can. Um, I think that the, the complaining on Twitter about not getting codes and all of the stuff that's going on there is just it's just stupid. I think I'll just end with that. It's stupid from anybody. You're not you're not owed a code. And now people have gone to taking like that term. You're not owed a code, but so they're just basically still bitching, but putting, we know no one is owed a code. It's like, it's just bitching. I, I don't really know another way around it. Um, I didn't see too much on suicide squad. I didn't check them. Um, but it, it's happened. It's happened to everybody on a game that big. You probably want to make sure you're really right, but whatever. Lum Lum says, as you've said before, the fake leakers all walking back the Xbox discussions have taught me a thing or two about game coverage. Yeah. They continue to do that, man. Content creators continue to fucking You know do why, that, though? So. Because it, it, you know how we've talked about how the first wrong article never gets or always gets more views than the second corrected article? Yeah, of course. The first of course, wrong rumor. people still canceled that aren't supposed to be canceled, dude. Right. That's what sticks with people. Yeah. The but first anyways. wrong article. 
rumor gets more subscribers for your podcast 100%. than the second fixed article. Oh, dude. Yes. Yes. There and that's so what many... your podcasts are big oh. now. And that is why so yeah. many people are using it to bloat yeah. their podcast as much as possible. Because they do breaking news without yeah. any knowledge of anything, dude. Yeah. And like, yeah, like actually people's lives get ruined where it's like rumors and stuff. And they like. Or just a game talk about the rumors, having a weird a rumor game. about it that has nothing yeah. to do with actually what's and going then, on. And then when you talk about said game or said whatever that had a rumor on it. And then if they, they, they themselves corrected that rumor. When you associate with that name, people still just only think about the rumor itself. They don't even think about the correction of the rumor. You know this what I'm must, trying to say? I like do know what you're saying. Like, have that negative connotation forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, these all came in through Patreon, and people must be talking about the same stuff, because this one sort of is along the same way. It says, I've been watching reviews from IGN and GameSpot, as well as some other big YouTubers for the last several years buying games, sometimes on their reasoning, and oftentimes been disappointed. I want to thank Happy Console Gamer. By the way, Happy Console Gamer is awesome, Johnny, uh, who was tweeting with you a couple years ago, and that's how I found you. In less than two years, I've learned more about games, music, AI, and how to identify what fun is than I ever understood before. Some YouTubers stretch their videos 30 minutes of them, happy to hear their own voice. Others have some shtick. You just do the review and seem to have fun doing it. I can't thank you enough for teaching me about games. You're right, but teachers can be wrong. I'm sure I've been wrong. So, But thank you, and I'm glad you learned how to identify what fun is because I think we it changes with time. So always be prepared that something that you thought was fun when you were a kid isn't fun now, like grinding in a JRPG. <laughs> Remember when Pressing grinding attack. was fun, man? Yeah. Press it. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Man, yeah, when yeah, things yeah. change and you're like, oh, dude, and you move on. And you're all, uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, stop the madness. Hashtag stop the madness says, I unsubscribed from three different rumor podcasts this week. <laughs> okay, so this must be a thing. Nice. Um. Oh. Johnny? No, it's different. Johnny says, why do podcasts? Oh boy, this is misspelled. I love you guy, but man, a little spell check. <laughs> Don't do what I do on Twitter and just pipe shit out. He says, Karam, <laughs> Karam, your podcasts, Karam, your podcasts were getting 130 to 240 K thousand viewers when you uploaded them after streaming. Why did you stop? Yeah. That is a big deal. I don't know how YouTube handles. I was told YouTube handled podcasts better. And so what we've been doing is the stream gets to the end. I go in and tell YouTube to edit out our beginning, which is anywhere from one minute to 30 minutes, and then leave the stream because I was under the impression that would hit the algorithm in a less negative way. I'm thinking about changing that and taking the live and turning it off and then and then creating, and you can do this right in YouTube. You can say, edit in studio, create a new video out of this podcast, and you can edit it and upload it. Um, I am thinking about doing that because I did notice the, the, how the views work, and they, they do hurt discovery. I just haven't taken that because I've always been on the impression that if somebody sees the podcast announced and then sees the video later, they, they, they will be double negative. They'll be like, oh, my God, I saw it twice. But I'm starting to realize that the views, I went back and looked and saw that we were getting, you know, a thousand comments and, you know, thousands of uh, thumbs up when I was doing it that way. But when we left for Twitter or Twitch and came back, I didn't go back to doing that. And I have thought about it. I just, in all honesty, I just haven't taken the plunge. It's a good question. I'm gl glad you reminded me. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's a weird one. Uh, last one. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Oh, no, that's something else. That's something else. I'll talk about that in a bit. So thank you very much for your heads up on the, the podcast and stuff like that. Let's go to Twitter and see if we've got any questions there. Oh, and then the, in the podcast in the Discord. Um, oh, people are complaining about something. Always, right? Yeah. Let me, let me, yeah, let me go back and look here and see what people are complaining about. Um... Oh, no, they're celebrating multi-plat. That's interesting. There's a lot of people celebrating the Sony idea of PC. So that's pretty cool, man. That's good. That's cool to see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Box and Burger, who's a YouTuber. Uh, he's got a, his own podcast and everything. He says, I just bought Banishers, and I blame Jeremy Penner for this. Was on the fence. His review convinced me. Dude, I always worry about that. What if What if he fucking hates it? He's, Dude, maybe I should just rush through Yakuza and play Banishers. Wrong. Dude, how can you rush through? I can't. I can't. It's just too good, man. I want to do everything. 
yeah, that's hard. It's hard to rush through <laughs> yeah. that, right? So much content. Man. So much. There's so much stuff. I want to and... level every job on every character. I want to like, there's so many dungeons coming. And there's a lot more content. Uh, the game... whole Animal Crossing thing was like a drip in the pond, in the lake. But anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Dev guy gave me that list of Capcom games that's not on there. So, yeah. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Damn. I don't know. I don't know what that thought process is. Let's look at Wednesday's thread. What's your most memorable intro from a game? This is from uh, uh, Spetsu. Um, I got a bunch. Half Life One. Uh, Ooh, Half Life One is a good one. Half Life One is a one good amazing. answer. Yeah, I hadn't thought dude, about I, that. It one. stuck with me since I was a kid, dude. The, the yeah. whole uh, introduction of it. Holy shit! Until you hit the the yellow fucking crazy reactor thing, and then everything goes to shit. Um, Death Stranding was insane because it's like you don't know what the fuck you don't know what the hell is going on. There's like this girl is eating like a snail, and then and then all of a sudden you're like walking with this beautiful music, and you're like, oh, this is very nice. And then suddenly you're in a car with this guy, and there's like a baby, and then you're like driving through, and then like there's like a big ass giant black tar thing, and people are shooting themselves in the head, and then the baby is. You know, it was just crazy. It was weird. <laughs> just all over the place. <laughs> uh, Metal Gear Solid because of how boring it was. The fifth one, crawling through the the hospital. I think uh, mine yeah. would. Sorry, I would. I, I would. I would say my answer is going to be replaced by Half Life One. I think Half Life One's intro is probably one's awesome. Yeah, it's probably one of the best intros of all time to also yeah. solidify you as an everyday man. Because it didn't just say you're an everyday man, it showed him doing, you know, menial labor and pushing the thing towards the reactor and getting it all set up. I was going to say Mass Effect 1 because I loved Great. that Sorry. you an yeah. that you answered the questions about Shepard yeah. and then it, it, it yeah. from the planet, it pulls back through the window and it shows Shepard looking out the window. And I was like, you guys know how to do an intro. What were you going to say, though? Yeah. No, I just uh, I just blurted out praise. Sorry, because that just like entered oh, my mind praise. as we were talking praise about. Praise was sweet. Uh, yeah, as we were talking about Half Life One. Um, Dude, that and was oh, the incredible. airplane or the, the helicopter ride, and you're like, oh my god, yeah. what is this? Oh, dude, this is amazing. And then yeah. you find out all this. Oh, dude, that was awesome. You know, yeah. man, IGN uploaded a fifteen like the first fifteen minutes of the game, and it was they shouldn't have done that, man. Should, oh, like, they, of prey before prey came out they're like first 15 right. minutes of prey and it ruined the whole thing yeah like the whole but it was amazing man it was really good yeah the whole like here's the world in every and then the breaking of it was just that, that was next level prey was they yeah. did phenomenal in that intro man um which uh game had you run down the uh, normandy like the whole shore, what what is it called? Was it Medal of Honor? I think it was Medal of Honor. Oh, oh, you mean the the beaches, the Norm Storm, or, or, the beach? That was Medal so, of Honor, and one of the gear, right? one of the or Call Cog? of Duties, I think, did that. Yeah. Oh man, because I remember the one where there's just like shooting and fire yeah. and like explosions, and you're like yep. running through the beach, man. Yeah. And it was basically all just saving Private Ryan. It was. Just, <laughs> I mean, it was just the starting to save yeah. Private Ryan, even the, using yeah. the fucking bo boomer, uh, the boomstick things to blow the fence up it was just bioshock number one yeah bioshock number one was pretty crazy that was a good intro bioshock yeah. was a definitely oh my cerebral intro. Yeah. yeah 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 those are all really good intro. answers uh dragon yeah. age inquisition how the menu went directly into the intro yeah that was a good yeah uh, it's so funny you mentioned inquisition because i was actually going to um, say that and i couldn't remember why i was going to say it and that is why dragon age inquisition um Pickle Pounder says, what's some game modes and enemies you want to see in Helldivers? A game mode called doesn't crash and stays connected. <laughs> Good one. Uh, then uh, Spetsu says, NV NVIDIA has created an AI chatbot. I downloaded it. We'll have to see how it works. I don't know if you saw this, but it, it, it like, works. Uh, it's resident like on your PC. Yeah, but it's on your PC and can search documents. So you can say like, um, I'm supposed to have a meeting with Susan on Wednesday. When is that? And then you pick the folder and it'll search the folder for all that data and give you when that meeting. I, I got to see how well it works and how it gets access to your folders. It's like search they, everything, but in a different It's way. like search everything, but with an AI. Yeah. Yeah. But it's 33 gigs, I think, is my download oh, size. Shit. Okay. So it's all a right. it's a mini, you know, it's probably like a medium sized language transformer model. I don't know if I want that running on my PC all the time. So, yeah. 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 Like, 
Can you imagine? It seems to me like that would slow down a lot of shit. Because even everything, if you haven't indexed your files for a while and you open it, you have to wait while it makes a new database. I don't know if I want NVIDIA with a chat. You know, like being able to see my documents. They state very clearly all the information stays there. It doesn't connect to the net in any way. Which is true, I'm sure. But I just it still feels a little weird. And mm -hmm. I don't know why I would want a chatbot. I mean, I guess if I had PDFs and shit was inside, but if it can open a thousand PDFs, imagine the resources that would take on your PC. Yeah. You ever yeah, opened yeah. a PDF on a normal, you know, oh you double click God. a PDF I'll, and you're like, every day I have to. And then there's like, oh, I have like 20 PDFs open at once, all in the tabs. And oh, dude. And you look at the memory the usage shit. from a PDF, like editor, dude, reader, PDF? and all. I it's hate. the worst format in the universe. Oh my <laughs> God. And try editing one. I have. Remember, we were doing the D&D &D game, and I was trying to figure out how to edit a, D, a, a PDF for D&D, &D, and it was ridiculous so trying to get it all right. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't want to mess with anything that's looking or, or opening up a bunch of PDFs. Like, yeah, I'd rather skip that. I don't need that. I don't need that in my life. Let's see. What other good news do we have? Only good news. Only good. Um, Xbox February update is beginning to roll out. This just popped now. Says... <clears throat> Uh, touch controls enabled for Xbox Remote Play, new thumbstick calibration tool for Xbox wireless controllers, improved filtering and sorting for my games and apps. They need that. Mm. They definitely need that. I'm I'm really unhappy with most stores sorting and for this is what I was talking about with Steam. Not happy with yeah. filtering and searches and shit like that. Maybe maybe we need N Nvidia's AI to do it. I don't know. PlayStation Plus category for or game catalog for February is Need for Speed Unbound. The Outer Worlds, Tales of Arise, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Damn. PlayStation Plus, those are the free ones on PlayStation. I have the subscription. I can't remember what you even get with it. I think those are the I free games, the right? Sub, I think did you stop the sub? The, yeah, when they did the price hike. But it's not because of the price hike as much. I just realized I had it for a year because I subbed for a year. And then um, I played... Like, I, I got it because like there was Returnal on there and like a couple others... I played through them, but I don't think it has like a, a lot, too much to offer. I mean, for mm -hmm. someone who doesn't have a another console or another PC, I, I think it has a lot of good games to play. Uh, but if I already have Game Pass, I already have PC and all that, I didn't feel like there was a lot. That's what me. I noticed, yeah. man, was the overlap between Xbox and that were too heavy later on for PlayStation. They were getting games mm -hmm. I'd already got, so I just, I wasn't using yeah. it as much as I thought I would. I still have it because I want to be able to test stuff or do whatever. That's just sort of the name of the game for like doing podcasts or whatever where you want that data. But overall, I, I would agree with you. There's a lot of overlapping yeah. with all of these. So what's the price of the PlayStation? Oh, so uh, Reborn says Sony doubled the price over the cup uh, over the course of two years was 40, then 60, now 80, it, 80 for a year, though, right? Yeah, for a year. Well, that's not. I mean, for a year. no, that, wait, no, for, that, 80. That's not. No, so when I I bought it before the price hike for a full year was, was it eighty? I thought it was like a hundred something, for yeah. like a full year. I thought it was like a hundred something. Yeah, I would like them to get newer games. I just unfortunately there's just it's all repeats a lot of the times. But those are good if you only have that one. Those are, I don't find eighty a year a bad price. If that's what it is, I, I'm talking about PS Plus Extra. Maybe he's talking about just PS mm. normal PS. Yeah, he Plus. did say. Yeah, he did say something like. That was the cheap tier, so that's the cheap oh, tier. Oh no, extra is the one with the like the all the games to play. And the, the, the PS streaming Plus was only the monthly games. I do the streaming. No, the streaming one. is the premium one. It's that's like the, one I the do. most expensive one. Yeah, I, I've been to. I've streamed more from my PlayStation to my handhelds than I have ever to the from the cloud. I think I tried it yeah. two or three times and was like, okay, it works somewhat I tried well. It and when I, I wanted to play Metal Gear Solid Three, but at the time, oh. I don't know if it's still like this, but it just was. It's too. I from what delayed, I understand, yeah. they've improved it. Um, I don't know what improved means, you know, because I have my issues with Xbox cloud streaming too. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Neither one have the greatest bit, right? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just one other thing. Essential is eighty, extras one thirty five. So one thirty five is only eleven or twelve, like ten fifty a month or something. That's yeah. I'm I'm okay with that price still. I, I get why people aren't because they don't want the price. As Sailor says. Meanwhile, Game Pass increased price by $1, and people were outraged. Yeah, people get accustomed to that one price, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, we get accustomed to a price. Comcast raised my stuff. It had been the same for, like, I don't know, four years. They raised the price yeah. by, like, $3, and I was like, fuck you guys. But I still paid it, right? I was like, fuck you. Here's my money. Yeah. 
because yeah. I'm not leaving. I just want to bitch. <laughs> it's because they all raise price, I think. So it's like $3 yeah. here, $4 there, $6 here, $10 here, $4. And by the time you're done, each month has gone up by $40. Now you're looking at like, well, that is a lot of money if they've all gone up. PS Premium wasn't worth it for me. I never used cloud, and there weren't any premium. Yeah, I, I think cloud is the big seller for these guys. They, and they, they, they like want to get you know, or something. Demos, demos are great. Dude, uh -huh. still like Steam Fest, man. Those demos, sexy, man. There were yeah, some good demos. Amazing. I love this new Steam Fest thing happening yep. every year. It's yep. amazing. So good. And it's it's organic. It's not uh, nothing to no. bitch about the Summer Games Fest or the Game Awards or whatever, but they cover some indies, but it's always like what they've chosen to cover. I like Next well, no, or Steam yeah. Fest because you just open it up or Next Fest, whatever it's called, and it's just like, boom, here's fucking demos. Merry Christmas. I mean, and you're like, one of my favorite games of all time, Signalis. That's how it, it did a Steam Next Fest thing, and that's how it got like, oh, no shit. And, and noticed, that's sort of how you yeah. found out about it or how you got turned on to it? No, I found out about it from someone in our Discord, but um, yeah, I think it's like still the best survival horror game I've ever played. Yeah. If you call your ISP, you can usually get the price down. <laughs> no, only a certain number of times. Dude, you I've know, I, I used to, I had this, I, uh, back in Canada, Rogers, um, every year I would threaten to to leave and they would always increase my speeds. Or You know, it doesn't like cost them anything to increase your speeds, right? It's I know. just arbitrary. Yeah. No. So it's just provision. They just increase my, they're like, here's uh, double the speed. Do you know what ours guard. did to us? This no. was about two years ago. And they raise a price. We called up and we're like, I'm thinking of leaving. And they're like, that's sad. Can you give us the data? So when you leave, we won't send you any more emails. I was like, mm -hmm. that's what I expected <laughs> to happen at some point. It, yeah, it, yeah. it took them six or seven years. But now that we have other services, you can switch. But if yeah. you here, at least, if you try to tell your ISP that you're leaving, because there's like four or five, no lie. The guy was just like, okay, no worries. Didn't try to upsell. <laughs> Didn't try to even work a deal. They were like, okay. No worries, blah, blah, blah. Can you All give right, us your please. data and, and verify everything? We won't send you any more information again. And I'm like, gave yeah. it half. To, I think I hung up. I think I was like, yeah, I'll give you some data. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And I hung up and I was like, shit, they called my bluff. Yeah. Uh, here we go. A ST just called me the same thing. Loving the podcast, Karim. <laughs> Do you stream to Steam Deck or phone? I've used Chaka, I think is what Ch Chaka. I, I don't know how to pronounce that, guys, for PS5 and Edge for Xbox. Yeah, I stream from the piece or from the consoles to handhelds using three or four different programs, and they're all great. In fact, they're all better than the official ones. I don't use the Xbox official one, and I do not use the PlayStation. Both can raise bitrate. So I think it was $5 was to buy the Xbox one. One of these days, I'll get you to get a handheld, dude. One of these days, one of these days, Which I'm going to be talking about, I don't know, but one of these days I'm going to be like, dude, I was playing on my Legion last night and, you know, when the battery Starfield. life is more than like two when hours. the battery life. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's true. Uh, somebody says it's spelled Chia Key. Chia Key? Like Chia Pet? Weird. J Reaper, $5 su super chat. He just says Signalis. That's it. He just says Signalis. Back to you. Signalis. Right back, back to you. at you. What else do we got, man? We got a bunch of stuff that's happened recently that I don't think we've talked about mm. because we've been concentrated on like the Xbox and shit. I want to talk about something, and that's sure. game sticks, uh, arcade yes. sticks. Do you do you use an arcade stick? Do you have an arcade yes. stick? Mm -hmm. What do you got? Do you remember the name? Uh, if you don't, Thrustmaster was it a Thrustmaster or Hori? 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 Um, I was a uh, fighting stick for uh, Guilty Gear. I got it. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. And uh, Injustice, too. That's how I played. Oh, damn. Did you? Uh, you played even Injustice played with that, huh? Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. Mode. <laughs> Blue yeah, Beetle, I played, yeah. Uh, yeah, I played it Blue, with a, with a Blue Beetle's pretty fucking um, sweet. It's just, I don't know. I, I Because a lot of those games, especially Guilty Gear, um, Street Fighter is the same. I don't think Tekken is like that. But it has a lot of minute, like, okay, you got to do semicircle, then half yeah. semicircle, then like this, and like half a second. Literally. Mm -hmm. you and and I was just I couldn't do it with my thumb, man. I needed the whole um, like with the notches and everything. Yeah. You know? Um. Real quick. Uh, <laughs> streaming battery life is fantastic. Like six hours. Yeah. Streaming battery life on the Legion is about eleven. The G deck uh, from Logitech, which they're selling for one ninety nine now, is like mm -hmm. eleven. So if you stream, you are yeah, you have amazing hours. I played Starfield on the Legion last night for about four locally though and i'm really impressed with the battery life um on that but abzi's right battery life still needs to be improved the only one i know that has a good battery life is the one x player two and it's pretty heavy because of it 
Um, so back onto what you were saying. So I got a Mayfly, May, Mayfly, I think is a very cheap yeah. brand. They're like 60 bucks. And then I replaced the gates with Senua, uh, Sen, Sen, the, the, the flight, the, the stick gate itself to put better diagonals in it. I think it's called yeah, Sen, yeah. Senua or Sen, Sensua. Like the... Yeah. 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 So I replaced the buttons and dude, it was like $5 for the gate. It was like a dollar a button for the for better button switches. So the whole thing cost me like sixty five dollars or whatever. And man, that thing is awesome. And then my friend brought over his hundred and twenty dollar one, and he instant had buyer's remorse. He played mine, <laughs> and he was like, "Oh damn!" And mine has an adapter to work on other consoles, right. which I don't know if yeah. it does anymore because of the new certification uh, shit that just went up with Sony and Xbox. But yeah, man, it's pretty cool. It, it, it really is. I don't love them. Because I don't find them as comfortable as just rest in your thumbs, but goddamn, I did pull off better moves. Like there I is love no the buttons too, man. Oh, do you? You why? Because yeah. it's easier to like multi-button without it's like a the thumb. Like clicky, the and and like the responsiveness, and it's just like yeah, it's just very very. Um, there's no pressure, you know. It's just like tsk, 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 you know, yeah, and it sounds good. I told you my friend plays with the claw. Like he holds the joystick, <laughs> he, he holds the, it, oh, and he claws it, and he's good. And he uses his pinky for there the was bumpers. A meme, and... <sighs> there's a meme for like the Armored Core uh, games, the old ones that people would play like this, like what, like that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know if it, uh, people actually played like this, but it's because um, the old Armored Cores had you aim really weirdly, like L1 and R2 oh, or some shit. Oh, gotcha. Where, like, Camera, yeah. Well, I told you weird. I play lefty because I hate because of Dreamcast having buttons yeah, for crazy. directionals South back ball. in the old days. Yeah, South South player. yeah, Um, yeah, man, it's it, it's been a big boon because there's been a couple fighting games. Tekken, I don't know if you jumped into Tekken. Game Game Dev was playing that, seemed to like it. I'm not a, I'd say Tekken's one of my lowest in the liked categories, but it's got some good moves. It, it works well with a, with a stick. It's definitely there's definitely improvement there. But what was surprising me, dude, is just that jump in price from a stick to a steering wheel. And I know a steering wheel has more in it, obviously, of course, feedback and all that. But whenever I look at steering wheel, I see that three ninety nine price point or whatever. I'm just like, oh my god. And it's it, like it, when you get, oh. when you reach that point, it's like, oh, I might as well like just have a whole setup. And then you're looking at like a thousand dollars. You're like, oh yep. fuck, I might as well. Get I have mine on a that. chair, <laughs> Abzi, and it's under a game table because it's too much of a hassle to get out. But when you get it out, yeah. when like there's a new Forza, I always I tell the people at Microsoft they'll be like, okay, you know, here's the review code for Forza, and are you going to get your you know entire seat out? Because they either listen here or maybe I've told them. But one of the guys there yeah. is like, are you going to get out? And I'm like, yeah, I for sure will. When you do. It is blessed because you get into the seat and it changes the way everything feels. It's like yeah. it's that true interaction. But God damn, son, it's expensive, man. And I mean, I, my seat cost me at minimum. Same one I've been using for like six years, probably five hundred, six hundred dollars. It's the ones with the aluminum modular shit and you can mount your, you know, you got yeah. the folding seat. But the chair it's like, alone. Yeah, yeah, the chair alone. Yeah. And it's not even the yeah. most comfortable chair. It's like a gaming chair. It's like those shit no, cyberpunk I mean, chairs. Up, chairs alone run up to like $4,000. Easy. Shit, yeah, like, dude. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, like yeah. as I shift right now because I'm fucking <laughs> compressing my spine. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's, it's it's insane. <laughs> it's insane when you see somebody with that system and they got their fucking projector, or their monitors up, and you're like, oh, man, how much is that? Oh, it's only 13 grand. And you're like, bro. Is that yeah. that's Saudi oil chic money, man? Yeah, that's like yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like so, that yeah, is a see car. Guys streaming. Did you, there's some people streaming on Twitch, like uh, the Microsoft Flight Simulator, oh, and yeah. like full on like six million dollar fucking like it's the it's it's as if you're in the cockpit of a Boeing or some shit. It's like the whole thing moves. So I admit, shit can go crazy. Some, I do have hobbies. one or two instrument panels. Luckily, I bought the generic ones, so they look yeah. like instrument panels, but they're not like for the Cessna 1743. They're generic, and that does feel good. It does yeah. feel good when they're like, uh, just what, 49, you know, you're you're taxiing <laughs> on 31. You're like, tch, tch, tch. yes, I am. Yeah. You know, it feels awesome, but at the same time, the wife looks at it and is like, what a nerd, <laughs> yeah. you know? What a you're nerd. Sick. You, you're all fucking, you've been playing like flight sim, you're all sweaty and they come in and you're like, hey, I've, I've been working. This is my version of work. That's one thing right. I've even told her. I'm like, it may look like I'm having fun because I am, because I love my job. But at the same time, it is weird when they come home from work and you're like racing a racing game and you're like, hang on, please. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm reviewing a game. You, you feel like a dickhead. Yeah. yeah, you feel like yeah. A dickhead, oh, dude, yeah. I've been talking in chat before and we're laughing. 
She comes home and I'm like, yeah, I got about two hours left of work. And she leaves. And I'm like, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. And we're talking about And I'm like, it, it's such a weird job. It's such a weird job. I, the only yeah. other time I've felt close to this was teaching martial arts where you're enjoying it. So you're having, you're like laughing. You're having a good time. Everybody's like in the flow. And it doesn't look like that. It looks like two guys playing grab ass. You know, it, yeah. you know, it looks you're just like, that's two sweaty guys wrestling. That just looks <laughs> questionable. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah but it's yeah, a blast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. What what other stuff do you have for uh customization on your PC or your uh or your um like your consoles? Peripherals? Do you yeah, do you have do you, are you using uh flight do you have flight sticks? Do you have um anything like that? Man. You know, I haven't for a while. Uh but I've always like I want to get a steering wheel set up car thing. Mm -hmm. Uh I I I I want like a like a really good like a new Maybe maybe I reignite my passion for like Elite Dangerous or something, or just like a I yeah. want like a space sim. Dude, I have a Rhino just joystick use. that is amazing, and it yeah. makes you feel like you're flying in a spaceship. Dude. Yeah, that I just I'm waiting for for one. You know, I'm waiting for one. The problem is, uh, if, is you love yeah. a, a bunch of games. I don't know if that would work for you because you'd get it all set up, and then I'd be like, "Hey, dude, Death Stranding Two's out," and you're like, "Shit." Yeah. I gotta tear all. I gotta tear all this shit down. That's the issue, you know? right? I'm a very yeah. variety type of guy. I don't stick to one game too long. Yeah, you know? dude, there's farm sim fucking panels that you can get that are like the backo <laughs> thing, and you're like, do 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 do. I mean, there's <laughs> esports for that shit, dude. I'm not... Yeah, remember that one time we were in chat, I think, and they announced the like. 2021 farm sim and i watched it and there were people who figured out how to like use a forklift and bounce a hay bale like they were yeah, they were combo yeah, yeah. and shit and bouncing it off yeah, the back of their truck it's ready yeah um tomahawk says i've used a gamepad for five years now and wouldn't go back to keyboard have you guys tried the uh tartarus from razor what, no. what what do you mean what's a gamepad like a controller i think he means he's gone to controller on pc I know a lot of people oh. do that. It's very comfortable to sit back. I, 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 yeah, I have I a mean, mouse. For, I still go for it. Like, oh, sorry. I like it's games like Yakuza or like mm -hmm. a racing game or something. Obviously, I use a controller, but you know, it's first person games, I use mouse. Yeah, I played depends. Banishers 60%, 70% mouse and keyboard. Uh, sorry, with uh, a really? gamepad on PC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. How was mouse and keyboard for that? Usually, mouse and keyboard was better because yeah. the PC or the con the PC has a bug or did where if you use the quick turn like God of War has, if you use uh -huh. a quick turn on the gamepad, it did the weirdest bug I've ever seen. You do the quick turn and then if you tried to move, it would move about forty five degrees and pop back and not able. You could never turn from that point on. You had to do another quick turn and jiggle the gamepad and sometimes it would like so it was broken. It was quite the uh, quick turn it's, it's, was broken. In Banishers, is the camera independent of the character, or are they connected? It is like connected. When you move? Okay, so I can I can definitely play that with a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, so yeah. so I really enjoyed it with the gamepad, even without quick turn. I just turned the sensitivity up for turning much higher than I normally would, and mm -hmm. it worked. But it was still weird. It was still yeah. weird. Do you uh, uh, do you do uh, do you do do you mostly like to play on a controller more, or does it like vary? I would say. Yeah, I if I can play on gamepad and be competitive, I pro because I have a tendency when I talk to you guys, I put the boom back. Like if I'm streaming and we're playing, sure. I'll sit back and I have the mouse and keyboard. It just depends on the game. Call of Duty is probably mouse and keyboard. And then mm. Arma, mouse and keyboard. I mean, Christ. It, I <laughs> guess Imagine. that's what I should say. Complexity <laughs> right. more than sure. accuracy. So if, yeah. if the game is complex, it's always mouse and keyboard. If it's not a complex game, shit, I'll use, yeah, I'll use gamepad. For sure. Mm. It just depends. And now that mm. I do do the handhelds, they're all obviously gamepad. They're just built in. You get more and more accustomed to it. I like them both for different reasons, man. I love that. I'm also, I'm also always alt tabbing out. That's a big yeah. problem I have with gamepad. I'll sit back and then somebody asks me a question in Discord while I'm playing and I'll have to lean forward, alt tab, look, answer yeah. the question. But so then you start going like, man, I just wish I. You know, was used and like uh, there's games where like the animations and stuff and like having just the omni like all every direction is just it just feels better on control like red dead and stuff like that i just yeah um, yeah especially games like assassin's creed a lot of those camera is in, independent of the of the character right. so your camera is just moving the the, the like the camera is just the camera right. so your player it's a isn't third controlling person. the camera 
you know so you don't yeah yeah exactly so it's like it's like um i like panning in that you know what i mean I do like too. panning feels better but like if it's tied to the character or if it's first person like i still i like to snap you know what i mean there's so also yeah. walking is a big thing i i, I they you know, only a few games like Tarkov and Splinter Cell, I think, are the only two games where. And there's a mod for Cyberpunk, a mod where um where you can control your speed with the with the middle mouse. With the middle and mouse. I want more yeah. games to do that because so variable. I. I love. I need variable speed in my in my immersive games. Yeah. Yeah. If the game has walk and you find yourself even once or twice going faster than the other person, I almost yeah. always grab my gamepad. And then just go. And I, we, we we had people in here even talking about GTA where they had a gamepad to to drive, and then grab yeah. their mouse and keyboard Same. to play all the other stuff. I could see that. I do for shortcuts use voice attack all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So like you know Alt Tab to Discord, and it knows what I mean to Alt Tab Discord. But sometimes you're just like I don't want another program running. I think sure. that gamepads are awesome, but I do think that I loved the little expansion for the Xbox. They had the th the key mouse and keyboard at the bottom, right? Yeah, and you could get all kinds of mods for that that did crazy shit that you could treat your PC like a mouse and keyboard even with that on there. That was great. Sure. So then you could yeah, sit yeah. back and alt tab out and alt tab right back in. I would I would love to see more adapters like that. Did you try the Legion thing where it's like you you can use it as a mouse like the controller? I did. You can yeah, the it. FPS mode. FPS mode. Yeah, yeah, that works cool? really well. That sounds really good. It is basically That's a mouse smart. and keyboard. It's just that you hold yeah. it vertically like you hold a vertical yeah, mouse. Yeah, buttons. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so you know, like some mice for ergonomics for bad wrists, they have them flipped on their side. That's all yeah, that yeah. really feels like. And it works quite well. <clears throat> Here's the thing I would never take the Legion somewhere and play it connected to a TV without using mm -hmm. just an Xbox controller. Right. If I was going to play a first person shooter, I wouldn't even use the Legion for it mm. in that way. I wouldn't need that. I, it's great that it's there. It's great and it works very well. It's a high, in fact, I think all companies should probably do that, but it's for a different mm. consumer segment than mine. When I go to a, a hotel, I don't want to go behind their TV and fucking plug my Legion yeah. in and play TV because I'm obviously not going to play a first person shooter on a seven inch fucking screen with a giant <laughs> mouse. That feels right. really weird. By the way, you yeah. don't hear people mention that very often, but if you get a small, a small screen and you try to play with a mouse and keyboard, the sensitivity and everything I have to fuck around with for a long yeah, time. Because so otherwise, also changes yeah. sensitivity. And yeah, shit. everything yeah. changes. Yeah, yeah. So normally I just sit back uh, and and play in bed or whatever and mm -hmm. plug it in. I mm -hmm. always bring a battery bank. And these new ones, dude, they need they need fucking huge amounts of watts to push battery. Yeah. So if you plug a normal system into the Legion, it won't even see it. It'll be like no batteries connected. You have to get sixty five watts or more. And those are the bigger battery banks. And so those are heavy. So there's like all these tits, tit, tit for tat when you're doing, when you, when you want to do a, a handheld any way than other than handheld. But I do yeah. have to say 3D printables are awesome. Some guy made a 3D printable monitor stand where you slide the Legion in, you put the monitor can be there already, and it's got its base is for the external GPU that One X uh, Two sells. Oh, they have shit. an external AMD, so you can it. It's awesome. It's basically just a monitor stand, no wires visible because they all go through the base or up behind, and it, it you can run any monitor. You just put it on there. I, I was like, that's pretty sweet awesome. for somebody who travels a lot, like Dino yeah. in our Discord, or somebody who's flying around a lot. That kind of thing, because it's only like. You know, it's only like that big, and then your monitor, you would, you know, or right. you, or the TV, whatever. But yeah, it's pretty crazy how far they're getting. And the little external GPUs are crazy now. They all use USB four. Plug it in, you lose about fifteen to twenty five percent of your GPU power, but it's way more powerful than whatever's in your handheld. Yeah, for you know? sure. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah, yeah. And then I use the N the N real glasses <clears throat> sometimes, but they still make me a little sick mm -hmm. because it jiggles the. Uh, view. What does it do? It takes USB-C out, which uh -huh. weirdly GDEC added, which I haven't seen many phones or whatever. If they don't come with G video out on the USB-C, I haven't seen a lot of systems add it. They did for that. But you basically plug it in. It's a pair of glasses with a pristine screen. Holy shit. Yeah. The Unreal screen is primo, but it jiggles with your face. And I, my heart beats hard. It's just straight up. So I'll be sitting there and my screen is going... <laughs> with my heart.
And yeah. after a little while, I start to get <clears throat> slightly ill. So I lay on my side and I, lo you know, put your head on the pillow. Mm -hmm. Can you tell if you had a handheld or your cell phone, you laid in bed, I consistently can tell I'm on my side. Does that make yeah. sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah, same, same. Okay. I yeah, didn't yeah. want to sound weird, but I'll lay on my side yeah. and I'll be, my entire brain is just in a panic. Yeah, it's, it's like, like yeah, you were yeah, on yeah. your side. You were on your side. You got it. And I have to flip because it, it makes me feel weird. I'm like, this is not yeah, as yeah. enjoyable as if I'm, you know, actually correct. That's interesting. I'm glad I'm not the mm -hmm. only one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Last, what was your last portable? Uh, NDS? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Nintendo DS? L your last portable handheld device? PSP? Switch. Switch. Oh, Switch. Okay. Switch. Yeah. Uh, before the Switch, PS. Yeah, I never did DS. I never got one. I, I had PSP. I had Game Boy. I had the Vita. I Ooh, played did like. You? I played it for like three days. I played Ninja Gaiden on it, and then I just never. I sold it. Um, well, I sold it way later, but I never really used yeah, I never it really again. Played on. It. I never used it. Dude, um, I'm telling you, they PSP just. The and Game Boy SP were my favorite. Yeah. Game Boy SP. What was that? The Ad advanced SP. It's like the the one that fits in your pocket. It's like a square, and you just like flip it open. It's amazing. It had lights. It had a backlight. Oh, oh my god, the backlight, game dude! Changer. Dude, yeah. people do not realize what it's like to not have a backlight until you do. And the the, <laughs> the day Game Boy of... Advanced or like the Game Boy Color, and it's like it's like you're driving, right? You're my parents are like driving. We're on like a road trip, and I have to wait until the light is like overhead and shit. And then I had to get I had this Game Boy Color huge like exp like thing with like a flashlight in it, so I could see the Bro, games I'm playing. I had the magnifier. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it was a fucking same, pair same. of prescription glasses, basically. <laughs> yeah, and you put it yeah, on there yeah, and yeah. made it bigger. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. and I had like great vision, but it, yeah, but it's yeah, like, yeah, it didn't yeah. matter. And I remember playing a Pokemon game <clears throat> with that on yeah. and going, I can fucking finally see like where your the fatigue goes away, where you don't yeah. have to, you know, cause those screens on the DSs, I don't know what they were, but they were like, what, four inches maybe. I mean, it feels yeah. like they were that small on the original <laughs> yeah, yeah. or Game Boy was certainly postage stamp. And yeah, those yeah, were no. rough to play, man. Dude, those were good times. I forgot all about those old systems. Not Nintendo. even original Game Boy. Like, Adv Game Boy Advance didn't have a backlight either. Yeah. It wasn't until the SP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it, is that what it stood for? The SP? Or what did it stand for? What did what SP the fuck stand did for? SP stand for? Um, Game Boy Advanced SP stands for... Special, <laughs> of course, they're Japanese. You oh, know, God. Special okay. plus. <laughs> Triple S plus. Yeah, yeah. Ultimate. Yeah, those were yeah. the greatest times, man. My TurboGrafx 16, I remember getting that battery. You know, it took double A's game game gear. They both ate up batteries, which is strange that their batteries actually lasted longer than the ROG Ally. ROG Ally's battery fucking sucks balls. I remember yeah. getting one though. You got a game gear, you got those double A's, and man, you'd take those out, they dead in seconds. And this is prior to really rechargeables being good. And mm -hmm. you'd pull those batteries out and they were already so hot that like they would, you know, that green lime fleck that you would get on an old battery like they were already feeling like they were going to have that you just kill batteries i mean it yeah. was so crazy you turn it on and you could feel the heat coming out as those batteries were like <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man it was nuts how quick those yeah. heat up batteries I mean, those were uh, the good old days though man when you got that handheld it looked days. nothing like a console it just barely looked like anything but squares playing tetris or game boy on those and they or had their game own boy, selection uh, of games um, like uh, zelda I think Zelda. Do you think they're, they're like portables now? They just have the same games. They they they're not gonna do like we're we're at an age where we don't right. need because they had their own separate games and yep. little ports and you yep. know additions. now they're now they're just ports it's, and they're yeah yeah yeah. I mean, dude, yesterday I used. I kind of miss that though, man. Like you mean having like, your own things, like own games, agreed. On, like the they're different games on those on those on those portables, man. Like yeah, like because Warrior sometimes they they had a different curve for upgrading. There was a different thought process because it was a handheld, and in the game design itself, it was different. So that's where so, you'd find oh. like the indies, like the lower mm -hmm. budget games. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say yesterday we were watching a TV show and I used Moonbeam to take my screen and put it on the Android device out there, and I was laughing just going like, "There's so many um shortcuts now." Back then, it was like you had your handheld. That was it. And then and then later, yeah. there were some hacked handhelds. You know, you started to get somebody pirated, you know, cartridges and shit. But it's it just now the technology is so far. People hacking the Switch with, like, chips and all this shit. You're like, God damn. The 360, when they went through their piracy issue, and you could go buy a 360 with, you know, 500 games on a hard drive. 
and just be like, <laughs> "Damn, son, things I, have I changed." Chipped, uh, I think the Xbox Arcade is the one I I I, I hacked. Oh, you J modded or whatever, J tag, J tag, or something I, I like that. I forgot what it was. Called. I just uh, it was like my 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 gamer score went up to like twenty thousand because I just kept getting the easy achievements in every game. Oh, <laughs> like... dude, like Barbie Horse Adventure, whatever <laughs> yeah, had yeah, an achievement. You turn it on and it's like a thousand points. The, the... Yeah, the most obscure games I would get. One of them being Alone in the Dark. Oh my god. Uh the 360 Alone in the Dark? Trench coat inventory? Yeah, yeah. Alone in yeah. The dark? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like the first half of the game was good and then the second half was just complete trash. Yeah. The uh that's something that we don't see as much anymore, by the way. So something you and I may you less so, but something that I'm sure you've dealt with, but I dealt with a lot as a kid was front loaded games where yeah, the yeah. game would be distinctly different at the starting couple hours that it would be later on. We hear it occasionally now, but I think it's much less than it used to be. Yeah. Much less. Yeah, it's all either consistently bad or consistently good, usually. Um, but yeah, we, we had we had a lot of those. Well, other than like Dragon Age Inquisition, where it was front-loaded with crap, and then it became better. <laughs> um, yeah. Jeff Grubb states mm -hmm. there are other unannounced games coming from established ips coming to playstation this year he's just correcting that even though sony says that there's no big games he's saying there's other games which is weird because nobody in the world would assume there weren't other games coming to the PlayStation. Yeah, obviously not yeah yeah, yeah this was <clears throat> in fact it was very clear but i think or that's a clarification party does he mean like yeah just party? like just like microsoft or third party exclusives all sure. sony and microsoft were stating was that their big ips that like we know of those are not coming those mm. like those are stepped out, but there are, there are other titles that are for sure coming. Yeah, it's for sure gonna happen. I mean, it's like somebody's not just gonna stop releasing games. Like I don't know, that just seems like a, a weird thing. I wonder what like Santa Monica and uh, Naughty Dog are doing. Is Naughty like? I mean, dude, Naughty Dog. There's always been a rumor, and I don't know why people got really confused on this, but there's always been a rumor behind the scenes that Naughty Dog wanted to do a space game. They and, haven't released something in a while, but yeah, yeah. and I, I tweeted about it. People were like, "Oh, you mean Santa Clara?" And I'm like, "That's not Naughty Dog. What are you fucking talking about?" No, I'm talking about Naughty Dog. There was a rumor about Naughty Dog doing a space game, and I would love to see that. I don't know if there's a another rumor from another one doing a space game, but it wouldn't surprise me, Abzi, because space and cyberpunk are not hugely filled right now. So mm -hmm. get away from the typical adventure games we see and see a space and the tech game. Is getting there, right? Yeah, dude, the tech is getting pretty crazy. I mean. Mm -hmm regardless of what you think of Starfield or No Man's Sky when it came out, or Elite, they've shown that space games, X games, the X3, X3 Reunion, X4 uh, Rebirth or something, I can't remember, the, the space games are getting very far and advanced in their technology that we're seeing. No Man's Sky added cruisers, dude, that you could, like, have fighters in, you know? Like, shit we just never thought would be added. Yeah, space games very is something cool. I would love to see. I would love to see... Le uh, Watch Dogs Cyber. Watch Dogs Space. And I, want I would more, like to see. Like, you know what I want more of? We see a lot of like fantasy games, but it's usually uh, like post-apocalyptic or like not much like high fantasy right. in there. Like not much, you know, like a second age Lord of the Rings and stuff. We yeah. I want to see like a super high fantasy game with a lot of life. Like a, I like mean, a Red Dead like fantasy or like or Star Wars looked like it might have been prior to them stating it's their smallest game. Outlaws, yeah. like when Outlaws, Outlaws was first announced, I was in my brain going, "Oh my God, are we gonna get? We're like, finally yeah, here." Yeah, but even and, even like like a, like a, like a, like a Star Wars set in the high, uh, the Old Republic or something. You know what I mean? Where, where like there's like life is booming. It's not like that. Oh my has God, been. dude, you just reminded me of something. I played talking about oh. controller. I played Knights of Old Republic with controller, and it is awesome. Oh yeah. So. I found somebody on YouTube who randomly showed that with X-Patter, they showed a, 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 a fucking a set of key strokes and stuff that you could translate onto an Xbox 360 that would be playable. And it is. And it is fucking awesome. So you were talking about an MMO like WoW, but on a controller. And it worked. Oh, I thought you were it talking about KOTOR. I was like, wait, what? Worked. Okay, no, Old Star Republic. Wars Knights yeah, of yeah. Old Republic Online. It worked. Do they do and it, it with... Uh... Like modifiers, it's modifiers. Like you, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yep, no. yep. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. fucking worked. And it, it must have taken these people a long time to get every adjustment, and what button works the best to do them. But they have modifiers, so like holding down the direction button and hitting A is like one area of attack. All the and it works. It legitimately works. It is smart too because it makes sense mentally. It's like I think it goes like this. So I think it's like 
one, two, three, four on the digital pad. So this is your first level of like um, spell of, of abilities, second, third, fourth. But if you hit the trigger, it goes to uh, four, five, six, seven. And so you have up to, I can't remember how many that turns out to be, like 24 spells or 24 abilities, well more than you need. And it works really well. It's a random YouTube I found the day before yesterday where there's this girl, uh, she's, doing, she's a very small YouTuber, but she's like, somebody had helped her do it. And she's like, I want to make a video on this. And so I just watched her video and I was like, oh, you know what? That's been my problem this entire time is like, I want to see if it does work, but I didn't want to do the key bindings myself. And they yeah, actually yeah. had the key bindings you could download and everything. I was like, fuck it. You know what? I'll try oh, it. That's and great. it works. Yeah. Yep. It works that's really awesome. well, man. Yeah. Fantastic. So that means yeah. Final Fantasy could already be done, right? Because that one's that. Final Fantasy is the same thing. It's like with modifiers and, and stuff okay, like that. Okay. So, yeah. that, so that one works. And then, you know, the <laughs> other ones we played before, your Guild Wars or whatever, they don't need that many buttons. So you could certainly no, do no, it. No, Guild Wars doesn't. Guild Wars is, I think, restricted to like four spells, five spells. Four spells. Like that. Five spells uh, and an alt. I, I think yeah and i think secret yeah, world is one. locked to seven abilities and then star trek works already because there's a console version of it but dude i'm telling you it made me excited for wow because i'm telling you right now if, if they said wow was on the xbox and yet you had to use this i would still try it it, it worked that well like the movement was perfect like when i walked around and i got to admit to you sometimes i get confused even on my own keyboard with when i have a thousand spells right in a in an mmo i mm. wasn't as confused on the controller and i think it's because they just made sense in how they set it up and i was like oh shit you know what i think i saw mm -hmm. you know did i did i miss even on did keyboard, i mess up I once yes Go like ahead. uh for every mmo i do the same for every type targeting mmo i do the exact same thing on keyboard is i do i do modifiers so i usually have q e r t f and one two three four five and then shift them and then control all of them to to get all like my abilities Q, um, say that again, Q-E-R-T. So I, I rebind, yeah, Q-E-R-T-F are like my main like spells. And then shift right. Q-E-R-T-F, usually the AOEs. Next. Oh, AOEs, the next ones. I see. Yeah, and then one, two, three, four, five, I have like my, usually my buffs, like one minute cooldown, two minute cooldown. And then shift one, two, three, four, five. And then control E-R-F-T and control one, two, three, four, five are like, you know, situational, like defensive shit or like weird shit, you know? So I do that with like every MMO. Jesus Christ. Dude, yeah, yeah. what the I hell? That many, That's, that yeah, just, I, like I feel like I'm, an, I feel like I'm like testing for combos. Mensa right now. <laughs> yeah, so you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So control yeah. are like control abilities. So like buff or, With control or, or, is like very situational stuff that I don't like. I I, I don't use all the, except F Final Fantasy because Final Fantasy every one twenty seconds in Final Fantasy like in a in a fight you you burst you know so you use all your shit and you you have to like go crazy on it. But usually, yeah, and usually T is like my inner, like my interrupt, and uh, yeah, I I have like muscle memory things, yeah. So the one thing I thought was cool was one of my friends does that, but he has them so that the letters make or so that the the keys make sense. So control are control like spells. Shift are spells that shift things. Oh, that's and interesting. It worked. Yeah. It, like yeah, when I saw yeah. when he was explaining, he's like, dude, I just in in some games it works. But he's like, in some games, you might have control spell. Like if you're a let's say a character that can hold people in place or freeze people or electrify them to stop them. He was saying, oh, those are control spells. I, I use them to control people. Oh, interesting. So he just was <laughs> well, like, dude, it yeah. was pretty uh, the guy was guy's a dumbass. But he had his he had his uh, I'm just joking. He knows who yeah, he yeah. knows exactly what I'm talking about. You're not dumb. You're yeah, actually yeah. incredibly intelligent. It made sense because then I could look and go, oh, control. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah, that makes sense no, for me. It was it's like uh, pretty intelligent. The closer they are to WASD, like the closer they are to my the fingers, more powerful the more and potent I, they are, or more like the more I use them. More yeah, like you the, use them. Basic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the I'm telling you, the further away, the bigger the cooldowns, basically. Yeah. Oh, the further away, the let. Yeah. Okay, I got. So, you. like, my one twenty second cooldown ability would be on like number five. You know, which yeah. I have to reach for or not reach. Like five is fine. Or like six, I never use. I never use. I don't uh, use yeah, six. Yeah. Five. I'm five actually is like the furthest, five is the yeah. most. Yeah, control five, is, the most five is probably like the biggest. I actually have the old add-on, little tiny add-on USB on the left side now, so it's almost yeah, like yeah. a num, but it's macros and whatever. And I got to admit that's pretty nice because it's just your pinky over the top of the of the shift button, and you can mm -hmm. hit those, so you can like play and you know go over to like another set of buttons. I think that's why yeah. a lot of people go to those pads that you see. The like Razor sells them. They're like the side like pad the with a thumb. 
It, yeah, they're almost like a left hand mouse, but they have a bunch. Yeah, yeah. They have like W E S, but then they also have these macros that are very specific yeah. for their yeah, for yeah, their yeah. their MMO. The Windows key is a special attachment for Windows on Power Wash Simulator. The Windows key is a special attachment for Windows. Oh, never thought about that. My Windows would always. You can turn that off though, can't you? You can turn yeah, off the I have Windows game mode on Windows. my keyboard. That right. I, I I do it when I play fucking Escape from Tarkov because you know that game is scary as shit. If you're like, if you press so, it by accident, you're like, oh, you know. Yeah. So I don't press it by accident, and or, you have to hit Alt a lot because it's like it's like Arma where there's like Alt stuff to like check your yeah. ammo and like you know check your firing mode, and then there's like not only is there like a diagonal peak, there's like a side step, and then there's like an overhead thing, and then like a blind fire. Like there's so many keys, you know what I mean? So Windows key, you know, pressing that I, is like. I think the only thing I would like to see on Windows is, well, I don't know. Overall, I like this, but I would actually like to see my keyboard be, so I have the num keys. Do you have a num key keyboard? Typical. Yeah. 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 I can't I, do it without it. I need the num key. Either, dude, no way. No way. I, I, I use the num key yeah. and I don't even use it always for entering. I use it for other stuff. Control. I use it for recording, but yeah. I actually do have a little add-on as well from loop. We have the same keyboard, deck. dude. Oh, we do. We do. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, I have a loop deck add-on that goes beside that because I I hold my hands pretty wide when I play a game. I, I man yeah, I man space I'll go like this. I, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. opening your legs on a train, but I open my arms. Yeah. So I have another set of keys on the right too, and that actually is awesome for like MMOs or macros for Premiere. I use a lot of voice attack as well. I admit I use voice attack more than anything. But yeah, dude, voice attack people just don't man. When you're an editor, voice attack becomes a magic sauce for editing when you're just like cut paste yeah, cut paste true. and then you yeah, can you not have, have to, you piece. can just be like cut paste cut paste. yeah yeah it's a great mark yeah, yeah. here because like premiere has mark and then you have to choose a color and i'm like fuck choosing colors just mark mark yeah. mark mark and i, I can go back never and premiere like get my interface to to work the way i wanted like ever like, i'd always have issues like oh fuck i can't like put i need that window just there in the there's a like, compromise I, I just, right there's always yeah, a compromise yeah, yeah of some yeah. kind um, yeah. I also just have a, 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 a Cadiz gave me another mouse, the one that are really light and they're cord through They're hex, you know, like you can see through them. He bought me one that's like a gaming mouse, but currently I'm still using this one, which is just the G502, which is like the wireless from Logitech and been surprised, dude, the battery in this is finally good. Yeah. Finally. And does it, does yeah. it not, um, man, every Logitech mouse I've had and I love them. Uh, they they do the double click thing where you press once and they double click. Had that issue happen so, so many times. So that is a known issue. And my last one had it. That's why I bought this one. And then he got me yeah. the one for Christmas because I think I had put some on wish list before buying this one. Um, if it happens, it'll be the third or fourth Logitech that's done that. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely yeah. a thing with them where the double click just becomes a thing. The other thing is there. I do not like their um their mouse wheel. There's something about their mouse wheel that my last prior really? to yeah, there's a mouse wheel that somebody oh no lie it's an is it Asus. the one where you can press a button and make it go like uh, like on this one it you up? can but the other one just felt better it was an Asus and right. it was a wider uh, middle and I don't know I why like I wide. liked it but it was like a yeah. little bit wider and I got to admit when I switched this one I was like mm, mm, and you're like wow I mm. can as actually use mouse button three on games you yes. know because usually I don't like to use it yeah. I hate mouse button three I hate mouse button yeah. three and it, it, no. it definitely did improve like the way the mouse felt but I think mm. what I was bringing up was that mice haven't changed in 20 years the only thing I've seen is the macros or the uh, 10 MMO buttons and fucking I could never use all 10 I'd use like three yeah. of them They're, I don't like uh, like my thumb I use to I don't know about you but I I like pincer my mouse. And so mm -hmm. my thumb helps me move. So pushing a button would move them out. I, I, I could never grasp oh, yeah. using those other yeah. buttons. It, it didn't work for me. I've also seen one with buttons on this side, but I haven't tried that either. Oh, and then yeah. I saw one with four mouse buttons, by the way. So two quadrants. So you have a tip and then you have a center. And you have a tip and a center. So now you would have your, your pointer finger would have two mice button. Have you ever seen mm -hmm. those? No. Oh, and then I got the new Wait, one. I, didn't I, tell I remember you about. the old ones. Remember the old ones that had three buttons, like yes. two buttons on this side. <laughs> yes. But I just got one, and I'll, I'll have to break it out in the next podcast that you put your fingers yeah, yeah. in and up, down, left, right, in all do different keys. It looks like a crab. It was a Kickstarter I got. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that thing looks. That. It yeah. looks like you're putting your hand into like the world's scariest vagina. You're like, like I don't know. Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I've used it, yeah, and I've yeah. got. 
pretty good with it. I love the idea of up and down actually being, because in feels good. It feels just like a normal mouse press. Up and down, though, I like the idea because, like what you were saying for an MMO, you could technically have weak fire spell, middle fire spell, power fire. You know, you could you could yeah, mess yeah. around. But, dude, my brain, once I get to the ring finger, my brain's like, there's yeah, too the much. Ring finger, like independent. My, yeah. yeah, by itself. Have you ever tried to, like, sometimes you yeah. try to move, like, sometimes like, it works like and then other this, times? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. People are just like, what are we, so coked up. Yeah, exactly. No, excited. <laughs> this is what happiness yeah. looks like. Get accustomed to it, my friend. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, I like the idea of my sort of adding some things. It's just I haven't found any. Like this one has an adjustment to DPI. You hold down so aiming's easier. So right. your thumb I can never hold. could get used to that. Man. Me neither, man. It just know, did I not feel right. Them. Yeah, I couldn't like on the fly change sensitivity. Do you have a sensitive when you're doing shooters? Do you have a button to slow down the mouse though when you're aiming in a shooter that's on your left? No, I I even like I even when I'm aiming like I set everything to be one to one to one to one because like it fucks me up you know if I'm like oh now this is slower I have to compensate and stuff right. yeah I could I could never get used to that yeah, yeah. either could I I'm not I'm, I guess yeah. I I don't know what like professional you know shooting fan, you know people who do esports do. But I know for me, usually I just set whatever's in the game and that's the best I can do. And even yeah, then yeah. it screws me up because like you'll be going to aim down sights and suddenly you're slow and you're like, I want to be as fast as, yeah. you know, I want to be as fast and then as there's I want. like games where you can set it for each scope thing. Like if you're on 8x, it's going to be slower than like a 2x or a Ooh. 4x scope. Mm, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Like PUBG I think, mouse sensitivity settings is like a whole page of like damn. Uh, which scope you're using. Yeah. yeah. It's like the first time I opened up Elite or, you know, some of the space games and they give you the macro you can print and put on your keyboard. Yeah. And yeah. you're just like looking at it going, this is for wings up when you're in flight, but you're at a thousand feet above the ground. You're like, fuck that, man. I'll just, I'll just crater yeah. into the ground. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not worrying about all that shit, man. Yeah. I still yeah. do okay on them, but you know, you see those guys. I saw some people playing Star Citizen and this guy was good. And he was doing like yeah. multiplayer, f flipping a ship in the atmosphere and shooting another ship. And I was like that I'd be the one on the receiving end. Like they yeah. couldn't even come close to it. What else do we got? Uh, say mm -hmm. some people are saying, uh, let's see, you can make an auto hot script. Yeah, you can make oh, a yeah, script. I want to talk about everything. something like Go tiny, not too big. That's just a little thing. So Tarkov uh, released a new patch, but they rolled it back. But in their patch notes, they said they're going to introduce uh, microtransactions. So they had so so oh. Tarkov is still in de development. Okay, Tarkov is still beta. It's still early access. Okay. And they had supporter packs. And if you got like the biggest supporter pack, you had the biggest stash space and a couple other things. Um, and it's just supporter packs to fund their development, right? Yeah. Um, and the biggest one was like $150. Um, uh, recently, where they uh, added an additional game mode called Arena, where it's kind of like Counter-Strike or whatever. You just go in and you like fight dudes. It's like not the real game. And only people who had the Edge of Darkness edition, the most biggest edition, had access to that. And so they discontinued the like the big supporter editions and they kept the first two for some reason. Um now in this new patch, they they said some they 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 said they're introducing microtransactions to just increase stash space and a couple outfits or something, you know, nothing like pay to win or nothing crazy, right? But they said something that really irked me. And they said their justification for it was, well, we've been, you know, the game's been out for people have been playing the game for like eight years and we don't have additional funds from these people because it's only a buy one thing and you get to play forever and i'm like dude you're you guys haven't you you guys have supporter people are supporting you to fund the development of the game and the promise that 1.0 will be released and you guys are saying shit like it's like you want to just get more money from these people and the game isn't even released yet. And that just yeah. rubbed me the wrong way where it's like, really? Like, uh, have we seen like games um, kind of introduce microtransactions to an early access title and and and, and justify it in that way? Like, I just rubbed mm. me the wrong way, man. And I, I just, you know, it's, it's, it's just really weird. So do you think that their purchasers, their new purchasers are dropping off and they have gotten accustomed to a certain amount of income? And and aren't budgeting right, and so they need to do the micros. Maybe. Is that? I mean, I mean, they or, started the development of the game with six people, and now they're up to right. like over two hundred employees. So obviously, for like escape I, but, or for for the Tarkov game, they have yeah. two hundred employees working on a game that's already in early access. 
Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, they have 200. They, they have, or they're over 200 employees now. Yeah. They started with hmm. just six people. Yeah. Fully indie, fully self-published. Would you say outside of this update, have, do they do substantive updates where you're like, that, like, that makes sense for 200 people? Like um, huge updates? They have they they consist like they have wipes and updates. Sometimes uh, it's bad ones. Sometimes really good ones. And they continue to work on the game and they continue to like change things and getting getting it ready. I think we're closer to one point oh. Like you feel it's not like starts like you feel you feel it advancing to one point oh. Um, I had no issue with just like being like, hey, you can pay for extra stash space or right. You, you know, even though like arguably you'd have an advantage. Um. Um, especially for people who can't have access to the biggest starter pack to get extra mm. stash razor. It's just the justification for it rubbed me the wrong way where it's like, oh, well, you guys have been playing the game for like eight years with no additional, you know, funds, Fast. um, cost or anything. And it's like, dude, you, you, the, the, the promise of the game coming out is you still haven't delivered, right? It's still not 1.0. So yeah. would you say, do you think that internally they could have done a 1.0 by now? Uh, no, I think the game still needs work to get to get to 1.0. What's a yeah. 1.0 in Escape from Tarkov, though? What's that look um, like to you? The, to me, it uh, looks like... Uh, so the game is uh, in a state where, obviously, everything is working well. The desync issues are completely gone. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, their anti-cheat is way better mm -hmm. uh, because that's a big issue. Um, hopefully, oh, is it? I'm, I'm not aware of almost anything on Tarkov, so cheating is still an issue? Okay. Cheaters is an issue. Um and uh and they they always had this vision where well there's no main story yet you know there's no it's kind of just like a get in get out um there's like questing side quests and stuff nothing crazy they always said they wanted like a full on like campaign thing to move through the game when you first start it um i think uh you know approachability should be a better you know they they've been doing stuff there's like this new map that I talked about, which is only level one to 20, which is like a smaller map and easier to learn. Uh, they need more of that, I think. Um, and they always said there's going to be like a co cohesive thing to the game where uh, you, you have like two game modes where the first one is like the full game, like persistent game, persistent yeah. character. And then a second like seasonal like wipe thing where it's like everyone starts again and stops and starts, you know, like what they've been doing now. So um, they, I, I, I think they still need to work on uh, a bunch, bunch of stuff, uh, technically, before it can get to like a one point oh. I mean, it sounds to me like they've just been working on it for so long that, like, the chance of them doing a one point oh seems like it's passed a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, I guess, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. So now you're getting justifications of stuff when they were obviously trying to get ahead of any complaints. But mm -hmm. if you're trying to get ahead of complaints, there's one or two reasons. One, you're fair and everything's good and you're just going to have people complain because status quo changed like Comcast raising by $5 a month after five yeah. years. And then mm -hmm. you're going to have the other where they haven't got what you stated. They haven't got even the basics campaign and all that stuff. And they're also asking. So it does seem like it's pretty sh underhanded just because mm -hmm. it seems like by now it should have been. I mean... When you look at a lot of other games that have released, they're done and on their second title by the time those guys have released, you know, they're not even done with 1.0 yet. So I don't know. Yeah. It seems it's I haven't seen it, so I don't know. And I don't want to immediately because maybe it all makes sense. But if yeah. they're also changing game stuff with micros, that's a big problem because that's also just going to cause them issues in the future. Like even an inventory space or something like yeah. that is changing the game way the entire game works. Yeah. And I get that they're like much, much bigger now, but like back in 2018, they did like a whole press conference and stuff. And someone asked like about microtransactions and they were like, we do not plan. We do not want to do that. That's not going to be that type of game. We just want it to be like a buy and play thing. We don't want any microtransactions. Um, but obviously, like, I'm not going to hold them to what they said. Twenty, They probably right. didn't think they would blow up this much. I mean, um, there was like a huge, huge, huge. I think Shroud started playing the game in like 2019, 2020. And like just you just the population just rose like it just skyrocketed. And they said it actually hurt them like with server issues and all that shit. Yeah. And they spent like 12 months, 12 months after that only working on scaling uh, oh, for the amount gotcha. of uh, unprecedented players that joined the game. Yeah. Dude, I mean, you can't tell me, though, that some of these companies don't get accustomed to the input and get nervous about doing a 1.0. They do. They get nervous about it. They're like, what will happen? Will 1.0 be the test. end of the ultimate? Yeah. And is it like yeah. going to then be this is done, move on to the next thing? 
where the the churn that you're seeing, that constant, oh, we're doing this, we're just in this, people going back like yourself, where I probably knew you for multiple years and never heard you talk about it, and then now you, I see you playing it all the time, so you're going back. They probably think that maybe that won't happen. I, personally, it feels to me like they haven't done near as much as they should have with 300 people. I don't know. Yeah, but I don't see, I don't so. know what's going on in their company, but when I you mean, look at it from the sound outside... Issues. Like there's still issues that are you know really? still in the game that, that suck. Yeah, like like they, they 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 can't seem to get sound working really well. You know, sound is still really messy. So we but used like to have. It's also much more difficult than other games because like in the game you can um, buy not with real money but like you get like headphones that change the way you hear sounds. Like you get like um, Comtax or like other types of headphones and each different headphone change the sound of the game to like hear footsteps further away or mm -hmm. like mute like loud like gunshots and all that stuff so I, I get that it might be way harder they're still on unity as well which is which is a thing they're still what on unity game engine oh right for that type um of game. so that's what i was gonna bring up like yeah uh hunt showdown is the same i think they're i don't know if they're final yet but you see all these i was gonna say at our old job we i'm not gonna say the classifier because it's not it, it sounds really negative but we used to have a classifier for managers could a manager mm -hmm. handle five people? Could they handle 10? Could they handle 20? And the number of people that could handle 20 employees was far less than five, obviously. So you get those really good low-level mini managers that can handle five people working under them, great. But you get to 10 and shit starts to fall to the wayside. And um, it sounds to me like wherever they were, they were fine and now they just have too many people because management becomes an actual job then too. So like when they started, you know, if they have 10 or 20 people and then they go to 100, that's a whole different ball game to 300. So yeah. maybe they need to look at how they manage their milestones. What is our my, what's an important milestone? To me, an important milestone is getting your fucking game done. Yeah, 1.0 is very important. It's extremely important yeah, to hit that. Yeah. Awesome, it, yeah. If, it, to me, it just sounds like somebody's scared of going to 1.0 because they're, right now, a lot of companies are getting away with Some seven or eight problems. year uh, yeah. early accesses. And just, I mean, and there's something about early access when you like a game, like you like Tarkov. So when you mm -hmm. know that you might have an impact by feeding back to them or what you're playing and they're watching, there's something that's sort of like, they, they're they they're sort of addictive about like, oh, I'm playing this. Oh, it's going to change. Oh, there's this. And when it's done, it's done. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like there's a little nervous there. The microtransaction thing is always weird because I don't have a problem paying so if I enjoy a game that's six years old and it's 60 bucks when I bought it, if they introduce microtransactions later that are fun or a cool suit, I have no issue with that. Mm. But none of these companies should say that up front. And that's, yeah. Or you should yeah. say, at this time, we're not looking at any, here's our game plan for the next two years or something like that. So that you can mm. leave yourself an out to consistently pay for a game that is popular. Because a game that is popular costs money to run. It does, I mean... We saw that with Victor. I mean, they were talking about the amount of finances to run Vermintide once Vermintide became popular versus when it wasn't or versus when something's in early access versus when something's huge and it's on every platform. Is there any ports of that game? It's not on anything, right? It's just on PC. It's on PC only. Yeah, yeah that know. sucks. I don't know it how sucks. they'd make it work with control. It's like Arma. I don't know how the hell they would make it work on controller. There's way too many keybinds. Yeah, way too many keybinds. Uh, SBZ, $5 super chat. Happy Valentine's Day, Day, gents. Just got a small Hershey bag from my company. I don't feel lonely for now. What's your favorite romantic moment in gaming? Oh, man. Romance uh, for me in games just don't hit. Um, like, they're, they're really difficult to, 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 to make an actually good romantic, you know, thing. Unless it was like a scripted event or less yeah. scripted, like a story. Um, I feel like the answer that would... Like, it needs way more dynamic stuff, I think, for, like, an actual... I, I mean, I don't personally care that much about romantic, you know, relationships and games at all. Like, that's the last thing I I think about. But uh, I feel like AI would be, like, the answer to the, the, that, you know, romance and RPGs and shit. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know what my favorite romance would be, you know? I, I mean, the Mine. Banisher sounds like a crazy one. Yeah. Banishers is good. Banishers mm -hmm. is really good. I, even, I don't know why I hadn't thought about it. Mine is for sure Nathan and... Uh, what's her name in uh, Uncharted 4? Sure. <clears throat> Him and his wife. That was done yeah. insanely well. Yeah. Very well. Probably the best. But yeah, romance is difficult, right? Life is Strange mm -hmm. was done pretty well, but it wasn't necessarily romance as much as a, almost like a, it depended on what choices you made. 
but Chloe and um, Max, their relationship, which was like friends, but you know there was a there was some juice behind it. You know, there's some thought process behind it. I like that one a lot. I think romance just doesn't work in games yeah. very well, man. I know romance it, it, is yeah, hard. It doesn't. Sorry, yeah. what were you gonna say? No, I know the most destructive one was Alan Wake. That romance was cr insanely destructive. It was crazy mistrust and anger and shit. But yeah. Alan Wake too, it was it was well, I won't say anything, but you know. Yennefer and Geralt is good. Aeroth and Jennifer Cloud, Geralt. Titus and Yuna. Hogwarts Titus still isn't complete Yuna. on Xbox. Titus and Yuna. Oh man. Was, UC4 uh, was like pretty realistic. Yeah, it was very good. Water. Sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh my god, you know what a tragic one was? A really, really tragic one was the the Final Fantasy 15 one. Damn, that was that was Oh don't say up. too much about it. Yeah, because it's it's not super not 16, old. You know I mean. But it's not super super old, yeah. It's uh but that one that one was I that think one with, affected me. Dude, with relationships, yeah. one of the problems is is like a lot of times you don't know the characters and the characters aren't around for like ten years and you don't I mean Depends on the relationships, and then there's times where what we see in a video game is different than what you see in real life. Or if it's close to what you see in real life, you see the inadequacies, or the uh, not the inadequacies. You see the unequal ways in which people get into relationships. A person yeah. who likes a person for five years before they realize they like them too, which if you play mm -hmm. it in a game might feel really off-putting. Where you're like, I don't even like this character anymore. But you might you yeah. might put up with that in real life, depending if you really think this person is 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 who you like. There's some stuff that's uncomfortable in games because you're interacting with it, and it it shines the light on just how nasty relationships can be. I know some mm -hmm. of my friends who who married, but when you hear how they got how they got together, it's pretty gross. You know, it, like where <laughs> yeah. he was, you know, banging all her friends or she was banging his. You know what I mean? And then they like, oh, my God, I actually like you. And they got together and they're very happy. It's, you know, they were young at the time. Shit was weird. But that yeah. kind of stuff, when you're playing it, I think playing it, that big thing with gaming. And I'm going to talk about this. I have a couple podcast invites that I'm going to. And one of the things I want to talk about is like <clears throat> entering into something when there's a history the history has to be told to you in some way or you experience it in a game. Games past and trying to make you care about the relationships, most companies ignore and they just have you bang, which is what Mass Effect did. Witcher did a good job overall, I think, with Yennefer. And, yeah. um, oh, my God, Signalis, dude. Jesus Christ. See, I haven't played Signalis. Oh, man. Yeah, that one was... Uh, I mean, I it is romance. Like, it's it's... Yeah, it's very complicated and the whole game the whole idea of the game hinges on it's 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 crazy it's it's very tragic as well yeah signalis is signalis i yeah. haven't heard anybody mention that in signalis it's um it's, yeah uh it's just weebs being addicted to waifus truth most relationships are rough just the way it is yeah i would say when you look at relationships in games and the history there you need history to have like a vested interest in somebody i mean yeah. there is love at first sight I've definitely met people that I've seen somebody, and I do know that one girl I did date for a while, she saw me with a group of friends, and she mm -hmm. liked that. But I would say most of the time we see groups of people, and then, you know, they might be attractive, but we've all talked to the attractive person who's you don't like afterwards, or the person who isn't didn't grab you. But you need interactions, and that interactivity is what games suck at, man. They just... They, it doesn't feel right. I'm trying to think of a game that even does a long-term relationship well where you like somebody like i said uncharted is probably one of the it or sounds like, weird but it might be one of the better ones yeah or like yeah any i think um big franchise like even yakuza you know there's like relationships between characters that like it's over time you know it's right with these characters for a long time so have you heard yeah, me talking very hard in our it. discord yeah. about that yakuza no because well, i'm I, I, so your friend in yakuza um the new one the yeah. asian girl tell me Oh, Chitose, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm like, what is going on? Why is uh, Ichiban not, like, getting on that? Like, she's awesome. She's, a, a, and then one of the guys was like, well, you know, in at least in that, there's almost always the one character that's, like, one of the guys, and it's not the, rela it's not the relationship path. It's a little bit, there's and some... It, it, 
Yeah. I, I'm like, damn, because that to me, every time I see her and she's doing her belly dance to kill people and, you know, he's, <laughs> he's doing his yeah, shit. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, dude, yeah. she's fucking amazing, man. Like, yeah. That's the person he should hang out with, you know. Yeah. So, Chitose, yeah, he uh, is that her, is that <laughs> he her name? Did, he did something. He Ichiban, bless his soul. Okay. Well, this is, very, I know what you're pure, gonna say. That's pure exactly character. what they said. Yeah, he's um, very innocent. He did something right? very stupid in the beginning of the game, like something beyond stupid. So, um, and he's hung up on something. So, yeah, that's like, I, she, I do know that. Chitose, I do know that part of the story. Yeah, there's a like hint of 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 Chitose kind of having a little something but yeah there's it's it's fucking ichiban man he's he's such an oblivious he's one of those oblivious characters yeah very very uh you know he trusts everyone and yeah he's and, pure you know, he's innocent and um very pure, but, yeah. and doesn't pick up on things but at the yeah, same time yeah. when i saw that <laughs> very, i was like dude dumb. that one that Socially. one works for me yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of, I'm reminded of another PS5 exclusive, Stellar Blade, which is rated adult only in Korea recently. Yeah, said they said they're not releasing <laughs> Stellar Blade there, right? Stellar Blade uh, is an interesting yeah. one because um, that's what it's going to be known for, it's right? Like Nier, right? It's like, or or Bayonetta, yeah, or Bayonetta. And but near near, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, that was pretty much it. No, th th that's what it'll be known for. What were you going to say? Yeah, yeah, because like near, um, like there's the whole 2B thing, but then the, like people have actually played the game, it like transcends that, you know what I mean? Like fully transcends like the 2B butt thing, right? Yeah. Um, so I wonder if Signal, uh, uh, Stellar Blade will, will do that too, or if it's it's going to be largely that. Um, you know? uh, Dev Guy repl reminded me that it's actually Rise of Ronin that they won't release in Korea. So Korea is getting the booty game. The butt Weird. game, as Johnny called it, but isn't getting Rise of Ronin, which I don't know why. Violence, maybe? But, I mean, that seems violence. weird because there's violence. Yeah. yeah. I don't know all the rules for all the nations. They all have different, you know, they all have different rules for why they do it. But, yeah, yeah relationships and stuff like that in games, sexuality and stuff can be done well. It's just really difficult to do it. Like, I remember the sheer horror when I was playing Cyberpunk and I realized there were seven whores for 30 million people. There were seven sex bots in that entire game. And there's like 30 million then, people in that there city. Like three, there like might have only been three. But I do know two, that when I, even in my review, I showed a train going into a tunnel as a joke. Because I was like, damn, son. Like this is, And I think of weird things when I'm playing. But that also pops up where you also get the game where there's just one character that you can tell is sort of set up to be the romantic interest. Because well, the they're the only with, available yeah. romantic interest. That's the thing with cyberpunk is um, you get one romantic, like actual romance per sexual orientation. So a gay guy, gay girl, a straight guy, straight girl. Right. Like that's right. your choices. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the so sex like, If you're a straight guy, you only have one person. If you're a straight girl, you only have one person. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of I, I think that, again, that's just they fell down. I think mm. when you look at cyberpunk, we can all agree, I think, I don't know, I hope we can all agree that they fell down pretty dramatically. And whatever mm. we got is what we got. But I think that their admittance of all of the issues and their desire to switch engines because of narrative reasons, they even talked about that in the PC, I think it was PC Gamer, but they did an interview where they had a bunch of people talking about narrative and even the guy who, was who, who wrote for that game was saying that the engine just didn't allow for the narrative adjustments that they thought it would allow for. I'm really excited for Cyberpunk 2. I genuinely Damn. am. I have Me no too. issue saying that game sucked uh, for what I wanted. Uh, the DLC did great, but that I'm very excited for the next one. I th And they're getting a new writer, which I don't know if that's better or worse, but I mean, they're they're changing things up yeah, on I mean, purpose. Like the writing in the DLC were, was way better and the side content Agreed. had way more depth and was way better. So if they just blow that yep. up, and that's what I wanted from the game is that It's DLC exactly it, case. yeah. I mean, yeah. I wanted more, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. 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 I'm really excited for it, guys. Like, I, in the same thing, I can love a game, and then the sequel, I can be worried about. People were all over me when I was saying about Cyberpunk. I was like, there is no guarantee whatsoever just because they did Witcher 3 Cyberpunk. And I just got flayed. Everybody was mad. Oh, it's, they do this well. They do that well. And it's like, if you look at the number of developers in the world that have a shitty game after a great game, it's probably 50%. I mean, it's very high. It's very high. It doesn't mean that they can go on and nail it. BioWare is a good example of that. They went on and nailed it for 20 years and have had a full decade of not nailing it. And, I, dude, it's it's okay. It happens. Like, everybody has a bad, you know, bad games are easy to, far easier than good games. So, 
It's not, it's not that surprising to me. I'm excited yeah. to see what they do. I think the romance will be better. I think they already hit it with what's her name in that. I love that character. Um, Pan Am. Is that her name? Mm -hmm. Pan Am in that one? I always get her mixed up with the Outer Worlds lady. Um, mm. Oh, yeah. I'm really Pavardi. And the Pavardi Pan Am, yeah. yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, Pervardi or something. Per yeah. Pervardi. Pervardi, uh, yeah. I loved yeah. her. I loved her. And yeah, I yeah. think that in Cyberpunk, they had a lot right. A lot right. It's just that there was no choice. The scenes, and, the dialogue, like the way that it worked, like seamlessly, was amazing. Yeah. Yep, I'm excited for it, and I think that there's other games. I uh, this is the honest truth. Abzi reminded me, Banishers might have the best relationship in a game ever. It, it'll. I'm it'll excited, I think man. it takes me. It'll probably take me a year to decide that. Honestly, sure. Like you know what sure. I mean. Like to look and go, is it recency bias or or is it because of the storyline? But I mean, I guess that's yeah. part of it. The story. I mean. It's pretty awesome, dude. It's oh, and there's a fucking great part. I can't even talk about it because I think it's worth experiencing yourself. I'll just say they handle the race issue very well. Okay. Her being black and him being him being a Scotch. They call him a Scotchman, like he drinks all okay. the time. They call him a Scotchman, but it is awesome how they handle race in that in the first couple minutes. And it's like the moment it's it's just. And I loved it. Mic drop. I, <laughs> yeah. Bro, it was, and it's not in your face, mic drop. It's it's like, yeah. it's like, dude, and this is not what they say, so I'm not spoiling it, but it's, it's like, dude, there's ghosts and possessions going on right now. Let's move on to the things that are worth moving on to. And I was like, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. So you couldn't yeah. have a Kotaku fucking, or, well, you could. They write an article <laughs> about anything, but you get my drift. Yeah. It was, it was very yeah, well yeah, done. No. I thought that was really enjoyable. They did such a great job. I'm itching now. I, I need to beat Yakuza. <laughs> well, and this is tw 20 hours, maybe 18 if you did it on easy or normal. And you, you certainly, I would, Probably if somebody so says, long. yeah, but it can be 25 or 30 if you do it on hard. It, 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 okay. the diff it can get pretty difficult. Um, some of the enemies are, can be pretty difficult because the combat's not perfect. But yeah, man, mm. and, and if you want to, do every investigation because you can move forward and do that. The investigations were back on banishers, but the investigations are great. Man, they're great. They're they're they, you Not can understand. Games can do an investigation well. Like no, and can... they don't require yeah. it of you, which you could say is a negative. Meaning they don't require you as the player to like bust out your fucking you know trigonometry no or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 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 that they get it, and then the real emphasis is on you taking the clues. And then taking what you know and deciding this ultimate fate. And to me, the juice. Being a judge. The juice is. That's what I said in the review. You're a Judge Judy. Like a, a militant Judge Judy out there slicing ghost heads off. And there's something oh, awesome about where I love figuring puzzles out. But the game's not about that. The game's about giving you the puzzle and the structure and what happened. And then using your tools, which are talking to ghosts and finding the, tr and then deciding. And the, the puzzle in a weird way is up to you. It's almost like they give you a jigsaw puzzle, you put it together and then you know what the picture is. It's, does that make sense? Instead of knowing yeah, yeah, what absolutely. the jigsaw, it's to me, that's it's, I wouldn't want every game to do this, but banishers does it. And man, like I said, if I got melancholy, you're going to weep. I mean, I think, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I don't want to oversell it did too you, much. Did you Maybe get you melancholy won't. and near like the exist, existential no. shit? I, I, well, okay. Oh, and that, yes. That broke At, me. The yeah. first, I got melancholy and very, hopefully everybody can still listen. I apologize if we're still talking, but because we are going long. Dude, here's what happened with near rep, uh, uh, automata for me. I got very lonely. It's a very stark world. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I heard the robot sing, and then there was a tunnel that I went through and I did some fighting in there. And I was like, I'm always by my, like, there's this feeling of, of just loneliness that pervades that game. And, um, that stuck with me more. Once I got to the end of the first time, I think I, w I knew where it was sort of like, it couldn't get more lonely. So I was like, oh, you know, and I like the existential stuff, but for me, there's something about in the dirt. So you like the existential a little bit more than me. I like the gritty dirt of two people having to make horrible decisions that are reality right there. So there's a mm. different love that we have for things. And that feeling in Banishers where I'm like, I'm fucking alone, dude. I can talk to her at night and I can talk to her in front of others. They'd think I was nuts. But no one knows what's happening but me. 
And these decisions I'm making, only I will be judged, even though what I'm trying to do ultimately has a different... Per it's fucking good. It's good. Dude, they're, they're good, man. I mean, how many games have those guys written where they do that? Like, isn't that only Don't Nod? I mean, is there another developer that, like, is able to usually end up figuring that out i don't you know, know ever if there since is vampire i haven't had something as, that hit that much that's what i've heard a lot of season. people in the review comments multiple people in the review comments said i trusted you on vampire and i loved it yeah. as long as i know what this is and that it's different and it's a different tact i'm gonna i'll probably end up liking it. i'm like as long as you can get over that instant power that a vampire has and that instant karmic debt and you get to the more dude <laughs> i'm gonna play it again I can tell you that, but then that I think speaks to why I like it. If I'm playing it again, I mean, I yeah. will play it as many yeah. times as no, uh, as life is strange, which is like I could see my myself playing it. Different choices, or yeah. do you think you'll? Yeah, yeah. dude, and I don't want to because there's three choices in there that I legitimately paused it and talked with somebody, and I was like, okay, and I, my Same wife doesn't know what the, my wife doesn't know what yeah. the fuck I'm talking about. I'm like, okay, so there's a ghost and a guy, yeah. and she's like, yeah. what the fuck? No, but I did talk around it, and I was like. If, and my wife does not talk about those. She's a realist. I mean, she's a therapist. She does real shit. So when I say ghost, she's like, there's no ghosts. And I'm like, I know, I know. But so I tried to walk around it and I didn't get much from her and I didn't get much from one other person I talked to. But the idea that I sought others to sort of just bounce it off of probably yeah, I'm speaks you, Vampire's stronger. the only one that did that yeah. to me, dude. Yeah. Only. Yeah. I'm telling you, Chris Avalon is a good writer. Um, there's multiple games I've loved the stories on, but something about Don't Nod, and I don't know what they do. It's not one writer. It's multiple writers. Whatever they do and how they bounce, and they understand. Like, I never wanted to be a Scotchman killing ghosts until now. I never wanted to be a 17-year-old girl until I played Life is Strange. And I was like, holy shit, this is a whole other fucking thing, man. This is great. They And Vampyr. Vampyr made me... Vampyr had better choices of being a vampire than any other game, even if they were focusing on that. You know, even Bloodlines, which I loved, but Bloodlines was more of the like... Bloodlines didn't have those... Uh, no, it was more political punches. and all the... It was, it, like, even when you were screwing somebody over, it worked and it, it paid off. But Vampire was like... Like you said, you killed a guy that you found out was the orphanage, and then I killed the kid and found out the mom had been looking for him. And I was just like, are you shitting me? Seriously? And I don't know if everybody's steps in the game would have aligned for years. Like, I don't know if they could have found out before. You, they probably, you, another player could have probably found out that that guy owned the orphanage yeah, before. Yeah, there's a lot of detail right? and small stuff that isn't like, the, because you got the, the how juicy the guy is mm -hmm. and all the information, but there's <laughs> yeah. extra information you can also get. That he's, yeah. a, that he's an amazing yeah. Capri Sun filled with energy. <laughs> and that, dude, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. That's the thing. Those games, th that's the thing is I, maybe there's other people out there. Anybody in chat not have a good time with Vampire? Vampire, because I would also like to s talk to somebody if they find story elements in a different pattern, if it doesn't pan out, sure. because it feels like it could. But if you had found out he owned the orphanage, you would have still had the juicy part. You would have still had that he was power it would have given you power. You would have still had that power play in effect when and you he's decided still a bad to person him. in other ways. And he's still a bad person. Does, right. He does own an orphanage. Like, is that enough to stop you? Right. Oh, bro. And that's banishers. Nobody's yeah. good, oh, but man, nobody's. There's some ultimately yeah. bad people, right? There's always going to sure. be. There's enough sure. decisions in here where you're like, I would be ready, and no lie. I so you have um, blame, banish, and ascend. Banish and ascend is for your ghost. You but you banish them to hell. You send them to heaven, or you blame the human for whatever's happened. The mm -hmm. number of times where I was like instant. You know me normally in Mass Effect. I'm like right away. And I'd go, yeah. and it fills up, and they did it perfect. The fill-up takes just enough time for your brain to go, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. And then I would go to a sand. I'd be like, J -j -j wait, wait, because it also tells you if you're going to hinder or or improve the chances of her coming back. So, dude, it's... Goddamn. Um, okay, here we go. Gunter says, I bounced off Vampire. Don't remember the... Oh, oh don't remember the reason why. Okay, shoot. Because I would love mm. to know... I'll have to ask in chat tonight if anybody's bounced off I mean, off if people those games. wanted a more combat-centric, like, vampire game, maybe, maybe right. it wouldn't right. resonate as much. It was way more about, like, the people and the dialogue. and Combat was a little hedgy in that game, if it you was, remember. There, there were, but, like, like, combat, the thing with combat, it was, like, 
even, especially at the start, it's not that great. Um, some powers are really, really fun, but some powers just didn't feel good, you know? So right. it's like, if you have, if you had the powers that felt good, it might've been better Dude, for you. There's a power yeah. where you lift people up and you like squeeze and the blood comes out. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. that's what was missing in cyberpunk. No matter what spell, what, what ability I got in cyberpunk, I don't remember going, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the things I was missing in cyberpunk was that some of the cybernetic powers later they've gotten improved. I, but I, I felt that way with played. hacking. Oh Did yeah. You? The first time around. Uh, yeah. The first hacking, time around. Yeah, I, I felt like I was like, uh, I was like, okay, like, oh, I'm this hack God. I can kill everybody before even stepping foot. I wasn't really, it was just like cool, like power trip, I guess. But with the second one, when I, when I went all melee, I was like, yeah. Like yeah, go, going with the katana and like parrying bullets and running around with Santa Vista and that one that that's when I was like, oh shit, you know. Do you know? Um, I think I got sold on back in the day when they were showing people climbing up walls with claws and there was a verticality there oh, yeah. and stuff. I think I just got yeah. sold on that, and when it wasn't there in those forms, and the I whole think interface I... when you hacked someone where it had like a neurological interface yeah. and that. First Didn't they the drop the brain dance because of because uh, of uh, flashing lights too, and they had adjusted the entire brain oh, dance sequence uh, the whole thing was that um they didn't add like a like a warning or anything like for that for yeah. that game i remember yeah. yeah anyway uh what are we at oh we're at three hours 30 minutes do we have anything else to wrap this up first thanks to everybody if you get a chance go to itunes and spotify rate us uh we switched hosts so hopefully this upload works well today um we'll mm -hmm. see this will be the first time on a new host but definitely review uh, the podcast, even if you didn't like it, tell us what to improve. If you did like it, we'd love to hear it. It definitely helps the channel. Check out, uh, become a YouTube member. You can also join the Discord if you do that. Um, what do we have? What do we have to remain? Oh, we have a uh, Pacific Drive in a week. I'm excited Pacific for Drive. And, and then a week Dude. after that, we got uh, Final Fantasy. We got some good games coming, man. Dude, yeah. Pacific Drive is. I mean, and then I'm it's just March. Dude, talking it's from the March. preview. I know. Dude, and then, then it's then Dragon's it's Dogma. And then, and then it's uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Listen to this. End of March is like what? Horizon Zero oh. Dawn, uh, Horizon Zero, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, Dragon's Dogma, Dragon's and Dogma. what's the other one that's coming? Rise like, of the Ronin. Rise of the Ronin. Princess Dude. Peach. Dude. And they're all within like four days of one another, man. One that's going to be... <laughs> Three of them are on one day. <laughs> it's going to be so amazing i don't care if i get um, even like one for review i'm just really excited i'm i think i'm getting one for sure because they've contacted me already but when you look at march there's three or four games that are 40 60 hours in a yeah. three day period and i think rise uh has a chance of doing well even though you know there are there's times where it can look rough dragon's dogma appears to be right on like sort of right where people expect it and Forbidden West, I hope more people get into it because I genuinely love Forbidden West. And there's some stuff you can do in Forbidden West that you're just like, mm, mm. dude, their their ability to handle technology is... Man. Those guys know their shit. I don't know if they're doing a third one or what, but I can't wait. I like the Horizon games a lot. I started to really think about what games draw me back to the PlayStation, and it's, it's more Horizon than it is Spider-Man by a good amount. Like, yeah, I think I don't even know what my favorite PlayStation game is. Yeah, what's your what's your favorite? Anybody in chat can answer this too. What's your favorite PlayStation exclusive? Like from these last two gens, the PS4, PS5. Ooh, oh fuck! Um, the first God of War was amazing. Oh man, the first God of Mine's War. Mine's Ghost. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Returnal. Oh, Returnal was. Oh. Yeah, Returnal uh, was. And Returnal was different, you know. Returnal yeah, was like, Returnal is different. Like it's a, it, it's you know not I mean? even their style, right? It's like no. different, different. It's different from what different, all the stuff they offer, and different from any other game. It's the only triple A roguelike I know. I don't think there's another other than like DLC for Hitman or whatever. Yeah, Hitman um, was good though. Yeah, I mean, God people of War are saying God of War. I think the first God of War, War had spectacular writing, uh, not so much with the second one, but I still like li like the second one a lot. Um, I loved Ghost. Uh, yeah, I, I would say maybe yeah, either God of War or Eternal. But like yeah, and Ghost of Tsushima is up there too. Yeah, dude, it's pretty crazy, man. It's it, it's it's awesome to see. Like I, I 
I know that people don't like it, but I, I love seeing it come on PC because it just means another way for me to review it and use it as an excuse to play it. I, it sounds so weird, but as long as the game's getting a remake and I like the game, I get excited about it a lot because it's like, oh, right, great. I get to play Forbidden West again and I get, you know, hopefully paid for it. But it's like it's it's great to be able to return to them and you're not just wasting time. You're actually, you yeah. know, yeah, turn it, cranking those graphics up is going to be great. Have you played the OG Gothic, Brandon says? Yes, I have. Gothic as well as, what's the one that starts Risen? with? Risen. Risen. Dude, yeah. crusty ass games, man. Crusty. The Risen games straight up crust, man. Would, I yeah. mean, you have to really <laughs> like the game to play through that. It is a rough bitch. But yeah. Two Worlds, yeah. Elix, two worlds. Uh, Risen, and um, Gothic are like the four Euro jank games. <laughs> the four horsemen of Euro jank. The four horsemen of Euro. Yeah. And I don't know where I would put, you know, Pestilence would probably be, re, re, would uh, be like Risen. Greedfall. Oh, Greedfall's in there. Yeah, Greedfall's in there for sure. Greedfall's definitely got that, like, where the where everything's just a little worse than it should be. <laughs> you're playing it and you're yeah, like, man, I yeah, really yeah. like it, but holy shit, this is rough. Where yeah, those games see, are great. Like, enemies the same clone enemies just plopped in yeah places, just plopped the dialogue in. was so good the story was great the story the and setting. even the combat yeah. wasn't great but there were times where the combat felt like adventure they movie say, hey, good. maybe you should use a potion oh maybe god you for the four potion. thousandth time it's like playing tales of arise <laughs> oh where they say something yeah. every time they cast a spell oh no, like, man yeah. please just yeah. shut up all right that'll be it yeah. for us we are all we're right. at three hours 40 minutes thank you everybody for watching really i appreciate every single one of you showing up we'll be back on friday to talk about xbox's event more rumors more kinds of shit like that feel free to jump in at any time i hope you all have an excellent week peace out